soon as I start doing anything on stream, she just scarpers. She's got to get out of here. All right, well, you're, you're moving around. I got to go. <laughs> Ridiculous. She does not want to stick around. She just wants a quiet, a quiet place. Who am I? Who am I to judge? All right, let's see here. What else do I need to set up? I need to open up uh, YouTube. YouTube. Who's tube? Oh, I, knew I don't have it open. YouTube. Oh, bother. VOD. Because we stream to the VOD channel now. I open up this thing. And there's my stupid face looking stupid. Look at me scratching my nose. What a weirdo. Uh, and then I pop out the chat and I can close this window. All right, there we go. And I think that fully sets me up. Where's my social stream? I need to open that up. Uh, that's in the stream deck. I mean, I could use it to open all the pages again, but I think that's it. Nope, that's the wrong one. What's well, this one? I think that's the right one. We'll see. We shall see. That's my chat monitor. Well, the toast monster didn't show up. How's it going? How you doing? I'm gonna do more Fusion 360 today. I did one upload yesterday. Ugh. I, I can't let the VOD channel die. I can't let it die. I have to. I have to hold on. Uh, no, it's not pre-roll video. This is so. Uh, I keep. I, I have to explain it. There's somebody every every stream that I have to explain it to. Um, you know, a lot of streamers do a pre-roll video, and during that period of time, the streamer is like, "This is this is what they're doing. This is what they're doing." They're not doing anything. They're, they're just waiting for that to expire. Because I mean, all, all that is, like the, the streaming software is getting everything ready to go. It doesn't, it, it's, it's going, it's going. That's what it is. You tell that software, hey, I want you to run this video ahead of my stream. And it happens to have a countdown timer on it, right? You go to that scene, that's a scene in OBS. Just like this is a scene, this is a scene, this is a scene. Right? They're all different scenes. So you'd have a scene that just has that video playing. And when it's done, you're like, hey, everybody, uh, uh, we're ready to go. And nobody complains, apparently. Nobody complains about that. Um, instead, I run the software and get ready at the same time if I forget to do anything, like start up YouTube streaming or whatever, um, and, then, and then talk to people until we all get our heads together and people collect. Cause like right now I could, I could explain what the project is right now and start, but only eight people would hear that. <laughs> so I'm going to be re-explaining myself over and over again. Hey, crash organism. The other Lone Star subbed. Why is that over there? Why is that right there? <laughs> I haven't seen somebody sub on this, on this. Anyway, 31 months, the other Lone Star. How's it going? Thank you so much for 31 months. I'm starting to, I'm starting to get very envious of Uwu to Oo because he is a lot more animated than I am. <laughs> he has a lot more viewers. I think it might be his time slot too, because I go during the day and he he works, so he goes he goes during the East Coast evening, and that may just have a little bit more reach than I do. I, going viral several times in a in a week is it also kind of helps. <laughs> but I can't do what he does. I, I don't want to deal with 120 volts. I don't want to cause explosions and fires. I can barely move and my dog gets insulted and leaves the room. That's what happened at the very beginning. What does he do? Uh, very similar stuff to what I do. He doesn't show his face, uh, but he does a lot of like kooky, zany electrical projects. Uh, he had a chill stream yesterday that was soldering uh, under a microscope, but who would, who would want to watch that? Who would, who would want to watch that? No, I don't think anybody would want to watch that. Let's get all the soldering stuff from the microscope out of the way. <laughs> this is an NASA engineer from Skibbity, Ohio, who uh, does a lot of really cool stuff. I'm, I'm totally envious that he's made it slightly successfully in this space. <laughs> I'll just get this stuff out of the way because we're not soldering today, but I don't want to lose anything from Dave's synthesizer. I ordered the uh, LM-13700s 
and that was a that was a five hour stream we spent reverse engineering around one of the chips that they scraped off and it because it's streaming it takes a while because i explain absolutely everything that's going through my head but it took us five hours to get to the bottom of the circuit surrounding this chip it had weird power input which was our in to figure out what it was we didn't end up figuring it out i thought it was a, a one of those matched transistor chips but it turns out that bengizmo is familiar with that chip because it is a common asic that is used in synthesizers a voltage controlled amplifier um and so we matched it up to the schematic that we got so far everything lines up perfectly and it seems to be like it's in unity gain and it's like the last stage of you know voltage controlled amplifier the lm13700 so that's another chip whose identity we know that we can replace and repair if we need to the question is you know what's wrong with this thing i don't think that chip is dead i don't think that's the dead chip i just wanted to get to know more about synthesizers and so we're still going with this thing we are still going i gotta keep my energy level up this stream i've had some really low energy streams past couple streams um and I learned today that recently broken bones sure do detect rain. <laughs> We've had three days of rain. And I woke up this morning like, okay, I got to bed early. I got a long sleep and I feel like absolute crap. Why does my shoulder hurt? Why does it hurt when I take a deep breath? It's because all of my skeletal bones, all of my ribs were broken at one point recently. And so the rain and the, the pressure change and stuff uh, messes with it. So it's like, oh, that's why. So I'm not I'm not mentally tired. I'm physically tired because of that. And one of the members of the house here has some kind of a cold. Wonderful. I hope I do not get it. <laughs> I got New Year's stuff to get to. I've got a whole day planned out. What's going, Kervos Bane? I don't know who Kervos is, but man, that guy's got it tough. That guy's got it rough. Let's get this notepad out of here because we're not going to need it. I've been dealing with the Dyson vacuum fixing one. Um, one of my roommates bought one and uh, it kind of turned my opinions around a little bit. I mean, they, they make good motors. That's always been my opinion. Um, their stuff is kind of kitschy marketing and engineering. How'd I break all my bones? Uh, when was that? Five, six months ago, I was, was coming down the stairs in the dark and one of my friends went, careful and i went i'm fine and i took like i know the staircase i go down it all the time and i went just just foot over foot foot hit foot and then head hit staircase <laughs> but uh, i woke up the next morning downstairs because i couldn't get upstairs to go to bed and my eyes opened and i just like wanted to scream because it was like hey guess what you have skeletal fractures all down your bones so um I went to the ER and they gave me a an aspirin and they said, good luck, fucker, because <laughs> the x-ray doesn't see, it doesn't see those fractures until they begin healing. And so we got a call back later and they said, yeah, you broke your whole skeleton. So <laughs> that was a little bit of recovery, uh, painkillers for just a little bit. Luckily, um, the new uh, glucose sensor works with the painkillers because it used to be if you took uh, uh, an acetaminophen acetaminophen an acetaminophen derivative it would break the glucose sensor and so i'd have to use just regular old oxycontin which doesn't really work as well but i was able to get the good stuff i was able to get the actual oxycontin acetaminophen i know there are people who are petrified of taking those but um i've had a good record with them i i can i can stop taking them i don't care <laughs> I, I associate them with the injury, and then when the injury's over, I'm fine. So, made dinner. Hey, yeah, a uh, good Christmas. Yeah, I, you know, I have this old timey radio, this 1960s, 50s radio that we should take a look at at some point. I had a decent holiday. We kept it low key, and over here, my parents came over. We had ham, ham. We had ham. Um, yeah, and it was a good time. Willow got this giant bone it's like it's like this big it's not a bone though it's it's a cookie it's like a somebody baked this huge like milk bone kind of thing and so we gave it to her and she was totally overwhelmed she did not know what to do with it and she uh she actually bare bore her teeth at me for the first time over it because she broke it in half and so we took half away from her because she would have eaten herself to death at that point the bubble butt is getting a little bit more bubbly and we've got to watch the dog's diet 
<laughs> yeah, she was she she was looking around for a place to hide it and was whining. But uh, yeah, I finally sat down on the floor and she she did her thing, cuddling up to the leg basket, and then uh, ate half of it, and I snuck half of it away from her, and so she got the other half of that yesterday, and then she took a huge poop. <laughs> Uh, where's the fan motor? Interrogative. Where did the fan go? Uh, um, 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 hello. Where did the fan motor go? Oh, it's behind the, it's behind the microcontrollers. Ha 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 ha. What a day. What a day. It's been raining for three days, which kind of is annoying because I've been working on the RC car and getting it all tuned up, and I want to do at least, I don't know if I can, but I would love to get a video of it driving around so that we can get a little bit of closure on that. But we're not done yet. I still need to make a, like a 3D printed thing that's going to hold all of the radio equipment and stuff. So we'll have another, we'll have another like, like design um, stream where we do a mock-up of the motor controller. It's just, I know now that all that stuff works, so we can pack it all in and, and make it nice. Um, for no other reason than to just get it done. Just finish. <laughs> I just need to finish that project. Super hot and rainy and hot. The fog in the air is thick. Yeah, we've had a lot of fog here too, but it's been raining for three days, and I'm getting kind of annoyed at that, because I, I, I have rubber tires on the RC car, and I, I used to have this place kind of set up so that under the desks was large enough for the Mario Kart home circuit to fit. And so that gave me like a whole track down here and there's not that much room anymore. There's a lot of stuff that's been kind of moved in. I've gotten some things to help me with that, some wire organizers and things uh, to maybe clear some stuff out. But like my shop vac is is right behind the, the shop here and it shouldn't exist. <laughs> it's, it's taking up a lot of room that could be other stuff. So uh, yeah, there's just stuff like that. Like I, I, I would need to clean up for a significant amount of time in order to make enough room for me to race around something as fast as the full three-phase RC. But that also begs the question, like, do I want to take that RC to the level of the actual Mario Kart home circuit? Do I want to, like, put a super-duper fast motor in this? But if I was going to do that, and if it was going to gain any popularity, I would have to put, like, an extremely strong motor in this thing to the degree where it'll blow up when I'm racing it because that that's funny um I would uh, you know like put like a 3s battery across the across the the mid thing there do the DOS micro radio do some kind of a blisteringly powerful motor controller and then put a huge motor on it and then it would be and, and maybe the differential even and then it would be like supercharged uh, and it would be funny because it would be I I hacked the Mario Kart home circuit and then I'd have the video like whoa let's run some code and then this thing goes and explodes right and then that would be the YouTube video and then on the cover I'd be like and that would be it that would be the cover the, the thumbnail then I'd go viral <laughs> That's all it takes. You just lie. You just lie to people. You don't do real engineering. <laughs> you put some kitschy music up, you get your drill, you start punching holes and things, and then you, you sort of throw stuff together. And then in the background, you do five hours of, you know, 500 hours of work to get it right. Then it all goes together. Make it time travel. What would it take to do that? I, you would have to do uh, lighter fluid on the tires and then some kind of a some kind of a flame source maybe you just put like a little a little like i don't know starter flame on the bottom or you do two, a puddle of lighter fluid and then you'd run through it and then have it connect to some kind of a flame source uh, the fire only goes three miles an hour so jump and then it would hopefully flare and follow <laughs> I could make a time travel to the time when they release the Mario Kart home circuit, and then I could release the video in a timely manner. I didn't do that. I uh, I ended up sleeping on that project, and that that kind of uh, kind of messed with me. I, I missed the the I struck, and the anvil was cold as hell. <laughs> I didn't really finish striking. 
All right, what do we got up here? Okay, this is a bunch of stuff related to modular synthesizers. I'm desperate, man. I, th we're down to we're down to like the the analog circuits troubleshooting portion of the synthesizer, and it's it's hell. I have to learn what every single bone in every single one of these things does, and they've got thousands of bones. I'm looking at bones all day. It's ridiculous. It's it's so difficult. Um, it's something that I should be better at, and I'm getting better at as we go, though. Um, each one has its own little moment of progress. Like with marbles, uh, the moment of progress was, oh, this stuff is so small that these solder joints look like they are good, but they are not. And, and then you establish like, hey, I know what that voltage is supposed to be here. And when I see this voltage, it means this is, this is disconnected. So I was able to take Julian's marbles and look at it and go, oh, I saw this on mine. Solder one pin, it works. It's, it's totally down to that, like, little... The, the knowledge you get from working with the circuit directly. What's up, Sephark? U.S. Postal Service says it delivered my package, but it isn't here. They sometimes do that when they're in the neighborhood. So if they're... If, if, you probably have minutes until your package gets there. I've seen at least Amazon do that. When they don't require a picture, it'll be like, your package is delivered. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then 10 minutes later, it suddenly appears at the door. They're just marking it as delivered because they're about to do that whole neighborhood and they want a little bit of credit. <laughs> Those drivers do not have an easy job, and it's been made difficult by stuff like that. It's been made intentionally difficult by these jerk-offs that run the companies. Speaking of which, Amazon Prime is a probably a third of a mixed drink for Jeff Bezos that he's currently enjoying. Take it from him. Take that money from him, because otherwise it goes back into Amazon. Once per month, you get to subscribe to your favorite streamer if you have Amazon Prime, which is now going to run ads that you can turn off for $2.99. What? Like, <laughs> they do this. Again, it's these fucking companies getting into a space, taking it over, making all the conveniences that we love. Remdog Cap! Hey, that was a prime. Thank you. You didn't have to spend it on me. I just said spend it on your favorite streamer. So like, it's definitely not me. So whatever. Um, yeah, they're they're doing that thing where where the company enters a space and gives us all these conveniences that make sense, and then they take them away. And they, it's like, oh, no ads, all kinds of content. But Amazon Prime already like their video service. Hey, Danger Mouse Eight subbing with a prime. Don't, don't make it, don't make it so that I mention Prime and then I get a bunch of Primes. You bastards. I <laughs> uh, love you guys. Thank you, for, thank you for giving me your Primes. I really do appreciate both of those. Remdog Cap, no cap, and Danger Mouse 8. Um, but yeah, the, like Prime is already a system where you pay for the video store, but then certain titles have a premium applied to them as well, like an extra like tax. So it's like... What are we doing here? Like, it's, everything is, is, is migrating back to, like, Blockbuster's pricing and availability. Watch, next they'll have, they'll have like, a, a stock of, of the streaming stuff that you can do. Oh, sorry, this streaming movie is out of stock. Check out one of our other titles. There's too many people watching it right now. We're, we're over bandwidth. You know, that's not a thing. Somebody's going to do it. Somebody's going to do it. We'll see. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah, I, I, well, no, Amazon's always been like that. It's always been sort of a, or at least from when I started using it. I don't remember when I started actually looking at titles from there. I'm off and on with that service just because I happen to have it because of free shipping. But uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> I looked at it every now and then. I watched some of the Wheel of Time and I'm like, what is going on? What is this? And I'm like, I just couldn't, I couldn't get to any of the plot. But uh, apparently, yeah, there's also other movies on there that, that charge money. Let's go to Skylon. We'll play some of that album. All right, I need Be Awake Juice. Be Awake on a Rainy Day Juice. Juice that makes you go burp. Yeah. It, it happens with everything. I mean, like, it's, it's any other one of these tech companies coming in and taking something over. Apparently, there's driverless cars now. There's driverless cars in, like, Texas. And some other places. Could you imagine you you get like an you're like oh, I'm gonna get an airport shuttle or an Uber. Uh, speaking of companies that enter spaces and mess them up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get an Uber. Car shows up. There's nobody in it. 
I'm supposed to trust this fucking automated car to get me to my destination? Well, generally, I would agree with that. The technology is not there yet. <laughs> it, apparently, they're running red lights. They're getting the, the, the police try to pull one over, and it doesn't stop for the police. And you're like in the back, like, what am I supposed to do? I'm in the back of the car. Am I, what should I climb over the center console and stop this thing? Can I tell it to stop? Like, where's the button? Where's the emergency stop? We're being chased by the police. What do I do? <laughs> Now they're shooting at me? Seen the police chase of one? All it's gonna take is one, you know, haughty cop to do a takedown maneuver on it, and then you're dead. You're dead because you got into a driverless car. You're like, oh no, I'm an anecdote. There's crud on the body cam when it finally pulled it over with no one in it. What the hell? Oh my god. Dyson bricked itself after the 18650s came out of balance. That's like a known, uh, like the 18650s and balance chargers. Yeah, that's a, that should be like a totally, that should be a non-thing, having bricked it from an update. Even if you open the pack and balance the cells manually, it changes a value in the EEPROM to make it not work. That's like, that's the printer dilemma, um, where you go in and your printer stops working because you've reused the cartridge too much. It goes, oh. Um, our EEPROM says that uh, you can no longer you can no longer print because your cartridge has expired, and the EEPROM has been permanently written. But then you go to AliExpress and you go printer EEPROM, and you have programmers and you have little replacement EEPROMs that have already been programmed. And there's just a whole wealth of, dear God, okay, there's a whole wealth of stuff to, to replace the printer cartridge EEPROM. Like that. Why, why is exercise equipment coming up with printer EEPROM? I forget what the keyword is, but when I looked it up many, many years ago, there was thousands of these things. You could just replace the little, the little chip Anti-consumer is what it is. Yeah, I, the technology is just not there. I mean, they're running red lights. <laughs> what, really? Why would that? I mean, I know the popular streamers accidentally will show something like an adult toy and get stamped into the ground until they're dust. But uh, I don't think that's really going to happen here. You guys wouldn't. <laughs> uh, bop, bop, bop. Let me see here. I'm looking for... Streamlabs. I'm going to move it over. Yoink. Put that over here. Maybe you should go down here. Yeah, maybe it'll go down on the right-hand corner. There we go. Okay. You got a programmer for it? Uh, see? Pro gamer move. Programmer move. <laughs> yeah, but smart toys and uh, EEPROM should not come up with that. That's They're gaming the uh, the searches, aren't they? Yeah, I was looking for a... I was looking for a printer cartridge, but then I found this. There's a couple chips that are still hidden on this thing. We got... Which ones are they? Hold on. So we know this one is the 37100, or LM37 whatever, the TRIAC voltage controlled amplifier. We've got a mystery here, and we've got some telling wiring there. And then we have the rest of these have been identified. So the one that was scratched is this one, and it was a quad-matched RF transistor to replace the LM324, the, the dual-matched transistor they replaced with a quad-matched transistor. But we don't know what's going on in these two sections, here and here. These two chips we need to identify. 
Because they're likely the thing that blew up. I mean, it might be the transistors in the stack here for the filter, but I'm not totally certain about that. It's either of these two. This is an M303. So this is a acidlabs.de uh, made a replica of the world famous, uh, what is it? T TD, TB, 303, whatever. The 303, the, the acid house engine. Uh, and it's got a voltage controlled amplifier, voltage controlled oscillator, voltage controlled filter, all in one, one modular synthesizer package. And they did a lot of good work here because not a lot, I mean, those things, they sell for like $8,000. If, if you wanna buy uh, like the, the real TB303, it's $8,000. Uh, know, we don't have that. This is like a $300 module, but the things that Acid Lab brought to the table were um, making, finding rather surface mount modern components that replicate and and maybe doctoring the circuit in a few places in order to replicate the old school sound of the 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 tb303 so they did a lot of really good work there but they were a bunch of greasy greasists they they did a, a little greasy greasy there and they decided to try to keep their circuit a secret from us us who are trying to repair it um by sanding off some of the IC values. And so we spent last stream figuring out what the value of this chip was, because I thought it was related to the power supply. Because the, again, one of the big design flaws of the M303 is that the power plug is not standard to the Euro rack. Usually you have a little 10 pin plug, and if you're really nice, you put a shroud around it so that they can't plug it in backwards. Instead, we get this weird wire that you have to plug in this weird uh, IDC cable that you have to plug in two pins offset from center. You have to plug it in like this with two pins hanging out at the top of it. It's absolutely mind boggling. And if you don't plug it in right, it explodes because there's not a lot to protect uh, from having the wrong voltages in the wrong places. They didn't do a lot of PSU protection. So it's not hard to find these things broken. I would like to find one for myself that's also broken if I'm gaining all of this knowledge. But then again, I don't know if I want to make Acid House. <laughs> I don't think I want to make Acid House from the early 90s. I don't think that's, I don't think that's my place, but it would, still would be fun. Um, Dave has given me the approval to just have this thing parked here until I can fix it. Um, I'm putting a little bit of effort into fixing it because I just want to kind of learn more about analog circuits uh but yeah it was it was ben gizmo that came into chat at like the very end and was like is it an lm 13700 i'm like holy shit you solved it because he knows a little bit more they they know a little bit more about um these kinds of things and the funny thing is ben gizmo is not a result of me working on you know they didn't find this channel and stick around because of the modular synthesizer project they've been around here before that so it's kind of crazy what you can get with a little bit of institutional knowledge uh, it's it's super duper duper useful that I have a a decent sized following on this channel. Uh, it's it's kind of amazing. Mind boggling is also, but I, would I have eventually figured it out? Probably not. Um, I don't think I would have figured it out without somebody knowing what they're talking about, unless I came across the LM one three seven hundred M outside of uh, this project, and I would have gone, hmm, that's funny. The power. And ground is kind of offset like that one project that I was, oh my God, this would be like 2028. 20, I would I would have this conversation with myself. So it's it's mind boggling that you guys know as much as you do. We have a good variety of people in the stream because I work on a huge variety of projects for all the people that are like, bother, why don't you work on burn the subs? Like, cause I'm totally burnt out on it. Um, we will get back to it. I have a variety to keep up. I like the variety of projects cause it brings in and keeps a variety of people interested in the stream. I think that's more valuable than, it's not necessarily more valuable than getting the board running. <laughs> to be honest, getting the board running is, is going to bring in a lot of people. But I, I figure the more I sow the seeds of variety before I get burn the subs working, the more punch it's gonna have. I'm hoping that somebody actually hears about it because last time I got the board running, I, I submitted the project to Hackaday and they didn't give a shit about it. I, I wrote articles for them. They didn't care about my super duper streaming project. I'm not cool enough. I'm not cool enough for a lot of these people. <laughs> Warhammer and Lego toys buzzing. You know, at this point, you might as well. I was looking at... I was looking at 3D printed guns. My state is a little bit lax about guns. I don't know about the 
I don't I have no intention to build one, but I wanted to kind of look at that and figure that out a little bit. I know one one person from Hackaday that I contacted about, uh, you know, hey, I'm back in Pennsylvania, like, yo, let's hang out sometime. And the first thing he he emails me back about is like, do you know somebody who has a field where I can shoot a bunch of 3D printed guns? And I'm like, nope, not gonna help you with that. I don't trust that shit at all. Uh, but but they've come along to such a degree now where people have Warhammer bolt casters that are actually legitimate SMGs. Can you imagine that showing up in a conflict zone? Like, oh yeah, I just got schwacked by a fucking Warhammer toy. Like, what the fuck? Guns should not look like toys in any way at all whatsoever. Is it really a problem or is it, or is it you know, a lot of wolf crying. I mean, I know, I know there have been seizures, like as in seizing, not not like. Blah, blah, blah. Um, they found like a, it was like a three D printed zeal or something like that. I don't know. Um, I, there's there's all this stuff about ghost guns, but really, if you're following the rules, there's room in that in the body of the thing for you to insert a plate that has your information on it, and the people who are uh, people who are doing this legally are doing that. They're trying to stay within the laws. But yeah, I know what filament is going to, to hold that the blast. Um, the, the, a lot of the ones now are using you, you buy just the barrel of, of an actual firearm and you put it in there, which is a better way to go because the plastic is fine for all the mechanical parts, but the pressure sealing parts, it's not. But I wanted to look into it a little bit. I wanted to see like what the status of the files were. People were telling me last stream that DefCAD was totally free that's not the DefCAD that I thought it was. The DefCAD that I thought it was is a web store where you can buy the plans, but in order to buy the plans, which are like a dollar, uh, you have to sign up for like a like a machinist, a gunsmithy, um, like something. It's like a guild or something like that that you pay money for, an association or something of that nature. And that's not the DefCAD that I think people were telling me about. The DefCAD people were telling me about is either a forum or just like a mega pack of, of files and resources that exist out there. Um, and I was looking into it a little bit more just cause that conversation got me thinking about it. Uh, and I, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't been able to look at any of these designs. I haven't, I haven't found the files yet. I'm too dumb. Yeah. The barrel is metal. And then the bolt carrier that locks into it is also metal. So the important pressure parts are still metal. It's just all the other, all the stuff holding it together is plastic and the ATF has designated the body of the thing, especially in AR-15s, it's the body with the mechanism that is the gun. Everything else is an attachment. So when you manufacture your own firearm, you're basically just building an enclosure for all of this stuff. So, and then of course they had to have considerations for the weakness of plastic versus a magazine and stuff like that. <clears throat> Can't have, oh yeah, in Canada, Canadian land. That's true. You can't have handguns. I always love the gag in Trailer Park Boys when they're when they're shooting at, at each other and all the cops show up and it's just fifty like laser red laser pointers on their bodies at, at all times. And and it's great because they didn't just use like a thing that that you know casts a bunch of laser beams in order to make that joke. They had a bunch of people holding laser pointers on the actors. So there are all these dancing beams that are like, it's just, I, I love that. I think that's hilarious. Got recommended your channel while scrolling. What are you working on with all these electronics? A variety of projects. Yeah, I was, I was actually just explaining that it was a variety of projects. Um, got a lot of modular synthesizer stuff going on because my friend uh, finally made me work on modular synthesizers. Um, yeah, the, so I've had I've had my archives going up for quite some time, and I guess that's finally maybe starting to hit the algorithm a little bit. YouTube is going, hey, this this dude's uploading five hours of video daily, which I can't sustain. That I can't, I can't, I can't sustain. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have enough foot. I don't have enough footage. I don't have enough footage. But I do have about three hundred videos to go up, so that'll happen for a while. Um, the daily uploads of VODs until we catch up. But uh, we work on all kinds of stuff. I mean, it, it's so varied around here. Um, Burn the Subs is the one that I should be working on. The first couple VODs that I uh, uploaded still had Burn the Subs working. And we've been sort of working on improving it over time. Uh, I've done a lot. I've bit off a lot for the, the latest one, and we just got to chew. 
Um, we need to do a lot more uh, Fusion 360, and I need to start tying together all the internal electronics so that it can become an actual thing again. Uh, and we got to do a little code revision and stuff like that. Uh, but the things that I'm working on lately, man, uh, mostly modular synthesizers right now. I have an RC car project that I've been kind of noodling with just for fun. There's some other stuff in the background that I, I can't even remember. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. A lot of it has been modular synthesizers, though, because it's, it, it's an incredible amount of work to get, like, one cromulent modular synthesizer up. Uh, there's a lot of modules you got to make. And I've been learning how to poke them together in order to generate music. Uh, and eventually that'll get me around the freaking copyright bots. I am playing music in the background right now. It's just OTT Skylon, but you can't hear it on YouTube because I've had to deal with copyright stuff for my whole life. Uh, now, all I'm doing with these videos is figuring out what I'm doing during a VOD and where the, the, the chapter markings should be and rolling them through the system over and over again to censor any copyrighted information. I had a, I had a visual copyright for Mariah Carey's album the All I Want for Christmas is You from two years ago. Uh, I had that picture up on the, uh, the screen and YouTube was like, oh, you, you, can't, you can't do that, that's against the law. And so I had, to, I had to cut out the beginning of a video, which by the way, because these are five hour VODs, it cuts out the beginning and then it goes, I gotta process this up to HD. That takes seven hours per video. So I basically set all the copyrights in the morning, check them in the evening, and then come back to them the next morning and figure out what has or has not deleted. It's, cra it's crazy. You know, I should, I, it, it would be nice if I had the ability to set, hey, for any copyrighted song, try to mute it. You know, on a per video basis, let me do that. Because then it'll run multiples, and if they still exist, I can say, mute all audio during this portion. By the way, those those VOD, those VOD uh, uploads, they're gonna have little bits of it that are cut out just because of the music. Um, I was listening to Metronomic live streams, and he was using copyrighted music, but he bought those tracks with the licensing in order to rebroadcast them from like DJ websites or whatever. That's like an important thing. They get the license that allows them to rebroadcast it at, at like a club. It's like a thing that, you know, it's totally fine. Um, but then I didn't buy that license, right? I didn't buy that. Um, he did. So I have to mute all that stuff and get it out of there. <laughs> what should we, you, yeah, we borrow some RTX. I wanted to do that, but the files are big and I don't know of a tool where I can drag and drop the stream into it specifically to mute songs. I don't know how that works. Um, there's a $600 voice tool that I would love to buy, but I'm not, it's like a VST. I don't want to run a VST. Um, I want to go back to the EQ project, which are the streams that I've just uploaded. The EQ project was such a failure. Um, I think what I need to do is go back to the Elliott Sound web pages, find his like power boost for phantom power. We need to make a box that has the two EQs in it and two uh, uh, compressors and then build that. And then that can, I can work that into my sound so that it sounds nice. But if I'm doing that, why don't I just do vacuum tubes? I wonder what it would take to build a vacuum tube. Vacuum tube microphone preamp. I mean, yeah, I could spend $70 on one. That's always a possibility. Or we could build one. Gotta love me a vacuum tube schematic. Question is if it's gonna take advantage of the vacuum tubes and if I can power it off of DC instead of AC. I don't know if that's a possibility. Actually, we don't want preamp. Yeah, that's what I've done. That's what I've done, but I've done it way too late. I, uh, listen, I know that there's a second channel, and I thought that I could be a greasy little weasel, and I could get around having to mute the music, because I listen to weird music. Uh, the tech house is not weird music anymore, Jesse. What's your problem? Um, I listen to weirder music, a little bit more obscure than your mainstream stuff. It says every fucking elitist music idiot. Anyway, whatever. Tech house is not that rare anymore. Um, I thought I could get away with it by playing Weird Tech House, and I thought double dipping in the uh, Twitch 
copyright system would also get me around it. I thought if if I if it's already been broadcast on Twitch and it's already been muted in places, then if I broadcast it on Twitch, it won't mute. And I was right. I was totally right. But now I'm uploading to YouTube and YouTube's more strict. YouTube is more strict. Good times. Anyway, yeah. Tobias, I hope I hope you're uh, you're well. Good to see YouTube people over here. The YouTube is primarily being broadcast as a means by which to back up my VODs as they come out. Oh God, I've got too many. Where are all the, wait, which window has Tobias in it? There it is. I have a second window open and and it's Crash Organism from last stream. Close that. The, the last stream that we did did not go up on YouTube, unfortunately, I forgot. Love the guy DJing next to his window. That's, that was fun. And, and also, you know, I, I, I kind of started doing this before I asked him whether or not it was okay, which is not a good stance to have. It's, but, but I did eventually ask him, and he was totally cool with it. He was like, yeah, this, go ahead. I, I hope I brought some people to Metronomic Live by, by promoting him in that way, because that's all I could offer him. <laughs> he wanted to come out here and party at some point. And I was like, sure. But I think we were still, like, all hunkered down for, for uh, COVID. Also, I've fallen out of knowing what the hell all of my party people, the, 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 the tech house people are doing. I need to catch up with them at some point. It's because I, I don't use Facebook. I just don't touch Facebook anymore. They don't deserve to know that I've stopped using it. Okay, let's see here. Uh, we need to start up Fusion, which is always a, a chore. So let me close some stuff here in order to free up resources. Like, <laughs> like GIMP. That's so crazy. The, the, the tracking number up top is definitely a little bit different. I think it's 73 and this one's 93. But like LM113, or sorry, I, I read one of the tongs of the M is, there's definitely an M there. You can see the two lines and the L, the corner of the L still exists. There's a bit of the one three. I think that's scaled a little differently on, on the overlay image, but you can see a little bit of the seven and a little bit of the zero. And then the zero M is just totally gone. There's a little whisper of a, of a, of a zero in there. But that's, the, we got two more of these to go. Untitled one, discard the changes. The information will be gone forever. Bonk. We know what it is. I'll have, I'll get a new chip in the mail and replace it. I don't know what I'll do about like releasing the information that we gain from this. Um, I guess I could do a GitHub and then have like a, like a SWAT team sent out to me. Did you share free information that you gained through hard work on the internet? You're in a violation of the law. What up Brink? How you doing? I think I was editing videos, uh, not editing, but going through the videos to get uh, chapter markings and Brink was there. <laughs> I gotta remember all these names from streams two years ago because you guys have stuck around and it's awesome. Um, I generally remember you guys, but still. Should we try to like print our own circuit board in order to make a preamp, a, a vacuum tube preamp for a microphone? Not look like this, it would have to look nice. <laughs> Especially not look like this, it would have to look nice. I would love to run it off of a DC power supply, though, and then have it send out. Well, no, it would. It could just do normal 48 volts at that point, because then we would have all of our filters in there. We wouldn't need the extra power to do the filters uh, remotely. Hold on, I gotta fix my windows. You guys aren't allowed to see that. That's secret. That's just that's just dual chat. It's the same thing that shows up up there. But if I do a vacuum tube, uh, it would have to use the same tubes that I already have, the Philips Long Lifes. That's one channel and multiple triacs. That's not a familiar part number to me. 6072. Uh, that actually does sound familiar. I might have those. Balanced input. You got a 1 to 10. 1 to 10, really? Insert optional input circuitry here. 
Well, that would be coming from the, the lav pack, so it would definitely need to be a 48 volt circuit, right? Week off thanks to the holiday has been working on optimizing my MTA software, so it takes less than 60 seconds to query all the train stops uh, for the giant New York map. That's cool as hell. Yeah, the week off should be standardized. Uh, it's it's insane. Every single office, there's like one or two people in them right now. This is that interstitial period between Christmas, holiday, and um, New Year's. And I always loved going into work during this time because it was just like, there's nobody there. You don't have any bosses to tell you what to do. Nobody can interrupt what you're working on. You can get all your stuff done and then slack off all day, which I would just slack off all day. That's what I would do at work anyway. Uh, so having the ability to sit down and actually concentrate without a bunch of hullabaloo going on and people coming to your desk to tell you all the scuttlebutt around the office, you could just hide or sleep sometimes. I had to go in the city to shop this morning and it was silent. In the city? I, I would think shopping would be a little bit more populated. It has been raining for three days here, and I just finished, or at least, you know, partial finished, this iteration of the RC Car Project. I don't know if I want to change the gearing at all or anything like that, but the RC Car Project, I did all the programming for the, uh, the motor controller, which, uh, DOS Micro, they make a wonderful circuit board. It works amazingly for very small hobby stuff, but the documentation on DOS Micro exists. It's not exactly complete. There's a language barrier there, and there's some tricks to it. it like if you buy dos micro buy something you can find a youtube video that tells you how to do the stuff because i had to realize that you've got to hold down the button and then it blinks the number of times for what you want to program and if it blinks initially red then you're calibrating the throttle you gotta wait and then it'll blink green and then it'll count the number of whatever setting you're gonna set when it gets to five it does a long beep Sometimes it's hard to detect that that long beep is happening. So when you get to that channel, you wait, and then it starts blinking the number of the setting that is set. But it still does the long blink with five. So if you've got like 10 settings in there, it's the double long blink, a beep rather. But the double long beep might not happen. You gotta have the motor hooked up too, because it uses the motor to, to beep. It's madness. Yes, I've already, I've already explained myself, and I do it almost every stream. Surely you know, and you're just trying to get a rise out of me. But then, of course, they go, no, I didn't know. I wasn't trying to get a rise. I'm just not familiar with Twitch. <sighs> Every single stream. I don't know how many hundreds of people need to be taught this lesson, old man. Um, yeah, so the deal is that I just wait for people to gather. So while I'm here, I might as well be talking shop with you guys. And then we have a notepad file, and the notepad file has, which one, seven of nine is always a problem. Building a little op amp board. Tribe of the Disco Kings. Okay, so this one's different. So we're gonna take seven of nine, and we're gonna copy that into the file, hit save, and then I'm gonna do select action, mute song. Oh, it's in here twice. Mute song only beta. Continue. Now, 7 of 9, I uh, that's in, like, all of the times that I've used this. Oh, does that mean there's a BRB during this? Did I get the BRB? I better have found the BRB. Hold on. I'm going to see if I've got it in there. What's with this project? I will wait to explain it to you for when we start. Air date 11.11. If there is a BRB, then I missed it. This is a desperate stream. What I should have done... Yeah, here it is. Back to work. Oh, no. That's when poly, Polyglotopus, which I'm not sure if that's Polyglot uh, rated. Huh. There might be a BRB in there that I missed. Hopefully somebody comments about it, but not popular enough to have to care. This takes so much time. It takes so much time. I have to go through the entire stream and figure out exactly what's going on. And it's five hours. So you better hope that I'm breaking it up into little sections. Oh my God. I gotta sit there with the video and hit right arrow on it until, until I find the stuff going on. See, YouTube's over there functioning. We're gonna get that over there, get that to a background window. There we go.
So yeah, I don't think I have the parts for this. I may have the coils for it. Well, no, I don't think I do. Well, it's a 1 to 10, and this one's a 4 to 1. Where am I even going to get stuff like that? I need a more modern design, I think. I don't really want an old school design. I want like a modern design that takes advantage of um, the properties of Triax and not a an old design that had to use Triax. I want I want the advantage of it, not the there's no necessity here. 120 volts plus 100 volts. Oh my god. I want the warm sound of the vacuum tubes. I mean, I've got that headphone amp over there. Can I just throw that into the audio chain? <laughs> I don't think I can. That looks old school. Yeah, it would be nice to have like as a little add-on box that was specifically for these microphones in order to give them the proper sound and do all of the audio processing as in the EQ and the compressor through, uh, you know, and warm it up with a vacuum tube. The uh, EQ could basically be basically be accomplished through vacuum tubes, which would make it kind of a neat little thing. It would it wouldn't necessarily be too much of a utility, but it would be sort of a cool thing that that would sort of bring a little bit of oddity into my stream. Um, but then I would have something that could run the mics that I could put to my other mixer, and that way I wouldn't have um, I could use the labs and the stand the the mixer or sorry the labs and the AT forty forty all at once. So if I have multiple people in here, they could walk over to a microphone and talk or, you know, plug into the mixer. And then I would also be able to have quick feedback on my voice so that I could tune things. Right now, I would have to run, I guess, I guess I would have to run OBS and it would be running VSTs and there's probably going to be a little bit of a, de a, a delay in there. So that makes it hard to tune your own audio because you are listening to a slight delay of the words that you've already said. And that is known. That's a known thing that shuts down your brain. It's tough to do. So on, on all this audio equipment, it's usually in, like instant feedback for your voice. And uh, you can that way you can get the sound that you want out of the whole thing, depending on the listening device. People have said that I get crackly at times, and part of that is the mic, the mic pack that I have getting confused. It does a weird thing with the balanced audio, and I think that causes crackling. But at the same time, um, I think some of the crackling might be down to what people are listening to me through and the the volume of the, for instance, low frequency. Like if the low frequency is, is lower than what a cheap pair of computer speakers could do, and it's cooked, it's overdone, then you know you get crackling of the speaker cone. I I think there's a little bit of that. I did I did listen. I listened. I listened to some of my audio from an old stream where I got crackly and it was bad. Um, and the solution to it is literally just unplug, plug back in. I got to mute during that so that you guys don't get huge bumps. That's a huge thing. With digital audio workstations love. Low enough listening latency for live monitoring when recording. Yeah, otherwise you you just shut down. You can't do anything. That's the whole reason ProWorks became so popular. That's interesting. The AT2020 USB has its own plug-in. I, I know that uh, Moist Critical uses it. You can see he's got his little his dinky little Apple headphones, which Apple puts a little bit more design into their into their base level products. You know, your Apple headphones, they're, they're probably pretty good earbuds. Although none of us should be using earbuds, even though I, I, I actually like the ones that I have. I have old shore uh like expensive they're like 75 dollars for a pair of earbuds back in 20 2007 and they're awesome there's some of the oh that was pro okay pro tools i know pro tools i was like pro works that's something i don't know that probably got popular uh s ah man i don't remember yeah that they're they're good uh earbuds but the thing is about earbuds is that they should be really quiet at all times <laughs> back in the 90s i was blowing out my eardrums with shitty sony earbuds not a good scene anyway the apple earbuds i'm sure they're pretty good design i would just expect like a really popular streamer to have slightly better audio but anyway he keeps it plugged in and one ear in because that'll give you an idea of when you're in the sweet spot of the microphone so you know when you're communicating properly uh, which is what i i didn't do that with the earphone but i used to have a boom mic that I would that I would bring over not a boom mic a microphone on a mic stand that I would bring over as well as the camera and they were constantly sword fighting 
It was bad. That was, those are the early streams. I'm gonna burp. Okay, saying I'm gonna burp before I'm gonna burp like cleared my lungs out a little bit. I didn't get as much of a burp. Burps are not from the lungs. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, the, the two stands would constantly interfere with each other, which is when I asked my buddy about a, uh, a lav mic. And so apparently, well, now the lav mic is, is, is king. I still, the sound still sounds a little bit like a lav mic, though. There's still that paper towel-y kind of thing. Paper, like, like a talking through a paper towel tube a little bit. But um, I think I've gotten most of that done. Because I haven't started working on the project. We still need to start up Fusion 360. You hold your horses. You guys ever, like, watched, like, a Raboz stream or anything? Like, or, or like tomato or they've got like a special splash screen for the start of stream i don't do that because i'm here and i'm 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 showing my face and i'm talking to you guys for a little bit i don't know like i don't have enough people to be that impersonal and put up like a like a hey shut the hell up i'm i haven't started yet screen i don't like that <laughs> i don't like that because otherwise i'm just going to be sitting here like i don't know pissing on my hands or something um we're starting up fusion have I closed enough stuff? I've got all these windows open, but I kind of don't want to... These are my babies. I kind of don't want to close them. I guess we've got the MC-303. Wait, that's the MC. We want the TB-303. And that's the 4046 that I'm also troubleshooting. No, we're not making a CPAP. We're using the fan and the 3D printer. It's... I guess, I guess all that information is in the YouTube description. YouTube gets, gives you a description, but Twitch gives you, uh, I don't know, better chat and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, none of this stuff is, none of this stuff is relevant anymore. And I'm keeping the 4046 windows. So what do we need? We need a uh, fusion. Fusion. There you go. I've pared down all my windows. No, the Philips Dream Machine had a recall, and um, I actually just uploaded all those, uh, all those videos. The Philips Dream Machine had a recall, and I was like, cool, I'm going to take mine apart. So I did. Now they have, and I just got all the, the settlement information, and I'm like, I could have gotten like 200 bucks out of this, but uh, I took mine apart. I didn't return anything. I don't have receipts for anything. I don't have receipts for a goddamn thing. I can't get any money out of this. So we're going to make the most of it. We're going to put this fan on the 3D printer in order to make it quiet. I'm going to let Fusion start up, and then I'm going to do a quick little bathroom break, and then we'll, uh, we'll start. Did I run out of OTT? No, we got plenty of OTT left. OTT actually had a 20-second stream in the past three years, and uh, they were 3D printing something. And I, I only... It was about 20 seconds, and it was about 20 seconds before I clicked on the notification, and so I missed it. I clicked in, and it wasn't his, his the splash screen was back up, and I'm like, what happened? So I went to his uh, video on demand, and there it was, a 3D printer moving for like 20 seconds, and then it stopped. I don't know what was going on in the background there. I was like, yeah, OTT stream. Makes cool music. I'm all in. And then <laughs> that was all I got. I wish I could put this on repeat. It doesn't let me just continue to play it over and over again while spinning around the part. I wonder if there's a plug-in for that. If I could get it to just spin around an axis slowly and show all the different steps of things going together, that'd be a cool view. That'd be a good splash screen. All right, I'm gonna VRB.
Actually, that would be a good idea. If I could find a spare minute in my life, go through a lot of these designs, a lot of these modular and uh, s design stages. And while recording with, I'm clicking on OBS, I need to be clicking over here. While recording with OBS, I could just do, oh, it won't let me spin while I do it. Damn it. Well, I could just do that and then do a spin around. And then I could go to the next stage. So if I record a video for each of these and I put them all in a folder, I could play them either sequent, well, probably, probably stitch them together with a program and I'd need to get Adobe again or something and then uh, have a, a random video out of a folder that would show the assembly stages and stuff of the, the various parts of the project. So this, and then you jump over to the rubber bumper, and then you jump over to the main printer file, and you would see it all pieced together with all the different stuff that we just put together. The printer would be kind of a big thing to do this with, but it would be a really cool display of sort of the napkin to design uh, process. Is there a gap there? Ah, damn it. Hold on, I gotta edit that step now. I can't see the steps because the, the face camera's right in the way. I gotta like, yeah, it's actually kind of funny because it looks like I'm peeking down. To the <laughs> um, all right, let me fix that and then we'll get started. I like this album. This music is good. It makes me groove out. We are still missing the screw holes on this thing, but I have no idea how I'm going to be able to measure and find them. They, they're in just odd places on it. It seems like I, I need like a tangential distance or something. I take a piece of paper and I measure from screw housing to screw housing and then I lay it flat and then measure it. <laughs> and I use that tangential. Wait a minute. I made the Phillies logo. Oh my God. Dun, dun, dun. Wait, which way is P go? Like that. <laughs> oh no, P's from the balls. That's right. Okay. Anyway. Um, all right, let's get started. That was, wait a minute, no, that was the wrong button. And the music. I like that song a lot. That's a good song. Anyway, I would love to be able to make music that sounds kind of like that uh, on the synthesizer. Oh, did the Pogfish not come in at first? Because I was, I was like, you're surely you're not telling me what to do. Uh, <laughs> hi, uh, we're back. Uh, for the YouTube audience, they're unaware of the fact that I didn't... No, wait, last stream went up on YouTube, the reverse engineering stream. It's the one before that where we designed all the parts that we're going to start working with today um, that I didn't stream. And I feel bad because somebody asked in the YouTube comments um, on the VODs that I'm uploading now, the 2021 VODs. Remember, I've got 300 of those to go, and they're going to publish every day until... And I've got to keep up. I've, I've been slacking a little bit. I, I may or may not be getting sick. Actually, I think what it is is that it's been raining for three days. And because I shattered my skeleton last year, um, I've got all these recently mended injuries on my ribs. And I'm feeling it today. If I take a deep breath, I get a little bit of a little bit of soreness. Um, I think that's kind of what, what I've been feeling. But um, yeah, anyway, we, we got a bunch of work done uh, sort of figuring out the dimensions of this blower motor and getting it into CAD. Uh, now the challenge is that we need to get um, a frame that I can print in the printer that will house the fan and the little motor controller that goes along with it. I have a setup on this printer that you guys may or may not know of depending on how long you've been around. I can get 24 volts and I guess I need to open this file. This is going to take a long time. We've been working on my hernia for a while, my Hymeria. Uh, is what I meant to say. The, the hernia is, yeah, that's, uh, well, anyway, the her the railed hernia um, we've been working on, and I, I made all of these wonderful 3D models that are based on the Creality CR-10S that this printer is built from. 
One of the older projects that I did on this printer was to take all of the control stuff and route it over to one singular thing. It's all going on a DB37. I don't have it here. It's not in this drawing. I need to bring it into this drawing. I have a DB37 PCB that I made, uh, and that connects the controller to the printer. Now, the printer has gone with one of these CAN bus boards now. We upgraded it to a CAN bus board, as well as a Hymeria hot end that got a Noctua fan. It, it, the Noctua may not be as powerful as it probably needs, but it's great for my purposes. And I've been printing with PETG with no cooling fan on it at all. I got a, oops, I got a BL touch. I got the Hymeria hot end. I've got the Revo nozzle. Uh, I think that gives me some kind of an Infinity 3D printer gauntlet, but um, that's what I've been working with lately. And it's it's been exactly the same as the last printer was, which is pretty bulletproof, but there's less stuff going up, you know, on the drag chains and stuff. Um, I would like to add to this. Yeah, that, well, not an RG45, but it is, it is um, CAN bus. So there's four pins. That's this thing here, that the big, the big Molex connector is CAN bus. And on mine, it's, it's 24 volts. We know that these uh, drone controllers, these uh, uh, BL Heli, uh, something or other, STM32, BL Heli or whatever, these, these controllers that I bought for 15 bucks on Amazon, these will run that fan perfectly. And I can modify the settings inside of them now, and I can modify the settings so that they'll start up very quietly. And then of course we can, we can alter the settings in Clipper as well so that they can talk to one another, right? Yeah, CAN bus is great. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely update the software on the CAN bus boards first, because that was a problem that I ran into. It's really, really cool to be able to run just CAN bus and 24 volts up to your hot end and have all the stuff that makes your printer print. But, but, big but, uh, but uh, update that software. I still, every now and then, I get an error where if, um, if it goes to home and measure the, 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 whatever it is, measure the whole bed, there's enough time in between commands that CAN bus freaks out and then it errors out. And so you end up um, having a failed print. And then all I do is I, I restart everything and try it again and it'll be just fine after that. But this is a big tree tech uh, CAN bus stuff. And then at the bottom, I put the other big tree tech CAN bus thing. And there are plenty of tutorials too, but just save yourself some aggravation to make sure that you update the software on it. Whoops, I just scrolled my chat instead of my CAD window. I really should work on that. I really should work on figuring out how to get those, like a cool spin around view of the, the whole project going together, you know, using the play feature on this and then, and then put those videos together. Cause that would be, that, that would be a whole BRB screen. That would be fascinating to watch. I could, I could still keep people locked into their television sets. Don't look away. There's too much going on. You have to watch. Um, so yeah, we've spent a bit of time modeling this and I guess where, let's see, that would be, I know I have the files in here somewhere. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find that thing. Old. Nope. 3D printer projects, hot end. No, that's the hot end. So that's the, the Hymeria hot end. Uh, it was nice to kind of upgrade the direct drive hot end and get a modern one and all that stuff. What happens next? You have to watch the whole thing. You won't believe what happens. That's all just rails. I guess it's in another folder. Maybe we're an admin project. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it might be, it might be that it's actually an older, I might have done it on Eagle, like, 7. I don't know if I have the, uh, the 3D modeled, because I've insisted on every single circuit board that I build has to use, um, three-dimensional parts. Just so that I've got a modern library here yeah that must exist on the old that must have been so long ago that i wasn't using it wouldn't be in burn the subs it's something totally different 
I actually have one of the circuit boards sitting over there, but I guess I just don't have it. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, so I have a DB37 plug at the back of this thing, and since I'm already running CAN bus to it, and we've already pared down what uh, like a lot of the a lot of the signals that were going through it, I can use some of the extra ones in order to run 24 volts as well as a PWM signal to a fan that would then mount somewhere on this bed. And I'm thinking right here. I'm thinking right here is a good place for it because there's not a whole heck of a lot going on in this area. It's just the second Z motor. And uh, yeah, it's the back corner of this thing. I think there's a little bit of space here in the shop so that I wouldn't be uh, you know, sucking up a piece of paper or something. And if we run that, we can put that vertically in this space. I would be tempted to just simply put it here and design it with everything in place. But this file begs for the sweet release of death. This file is just so completely and utterly filled with garbage on the timeline that I don't think I trust this program to manage this anymore. If I were a, a better engineer, I would break this out into all kinds of sub-assemblies, and then this drawing would just be stuff getting pieced in and, and put together. But, but I did this in a different way. I did this because I had to consider the whole drawing the entire time, and what I should have done is brought in sub-assemblies and then edited them in place in order to figure out whether or not, you know, things would collide. It would be like, the hot end, all this stuff would be one part, and then it would tie together with this part here. How would you run the air hose? Up and over. So if we're back here, we go up, over the top, and then down to the, to the hot end. And as that retracts, I would probably want something up top that's gonna like pivot backwards and all the excess hose would just be in this area here. It would just kind of, it would just kind of bend out and go around. Cause it's, I have this, I have a, uh, let me get the hose. Where's my hose at? Where did I put the hose? Let's see, I've got a big piece of hose. I think I, I might've thrown it into the CPAP bin. I had a bin with a couple extra hoses in it. Oh no, wait, it moved out of that bin because I, I decommissioned that one. So I need to find out where that hose is so I can think about this a little bit as we get into the design. Because if it, if it is a major flaw where I'm putting it right now, I'm gonna be mad at myself <laughs> when, when everything goes to crap. But I think what we can do is just get a couple little basic measurements from this area and just make sort of a minimalistic uh, bracket that'll just hold the blower fan out in space and then we can figure it out from there. And if we need to move it, we can move it and alter it as we, as we need. I just don't want to blow up my main drawing. My main drawing has had enough of my BS. It's about ready to like strike. Hey, I got all those old Dyson motors back here too. <laughs> I need to throw those out because I haven't done anything with them. It's, it's come to a point where they're just taking up space. I can't, I can't keep kidding myself. Everybody's like, have a giveaway. I'm like, I'm not gonna give somebody a half broken Dyson motor. <laughs> it's like, the only person who wins at that game is UPS. All right. That's not even a person. I guess corporations are people. Um, CPAP hose. Bada bing. I've had this kind of in the archive for a little while. I've got two of the Phillips heated hoses, but we don't need this to be heated. We're not exactly uh, providing air into lungs. So what I need is for a fitting, not too dissimilar from this, not necessarily this. I think this would be on the end of the print that fits to this ring. Yeah, well, the CPAP is, is designed, so the constant pressure auto pulmonary device. This is designed to supplement the air going into your lungs in order to keep a valve at the back of your throat open so it doesn't flip you over to the stomach and have you burping up stuff and, and suffocating. So not necessarily exactly that. It's, it's just, it's designed to push air into your, into your lungs. Um, and one of the fun things with the CPAP is that you can put, uh, allow me to explain, you, you can put the blanket over your head and not run out of air. You don't fill up the under blanket area with CO2 because you have, air being pumped into your lungs. So you can actually sleep completely buried in covers, if that's your thing. You should get a CPAP, because it's fun. Uh, 
I'm sure they wouldn't recommend it, but it's hilarious. You can also infinitely whistle. So if you want to have a live performance where you whistle constantly, you can put on one of those nose CPAPs and you can just constant whistle. I think that would be hilarious to have in a, in a track. Are they really whistling for 45 minutes? Uh, anyway, <laughs> the point of CPAP is that it is constantly pushing air into your lungs. But if you're just pushing filtered air into your lungs, it's not necessarily going to, it, it'll dry you out, right? It'll dry you out. Um, so what they do is they actually have a pool of water inside of it. And of course, at least with the Phillips one, the parts you could run through the dishwasher, the plastic was strong enough. So having a CPAP could be a good defense if you have a partner who likes to fart under the covers. Yes, yeah, you're getting your own air. You're not tr relying on their butt air. Um, and also it would be a, a positive pressure uh, clean room. So all of the farts would be pushed out of the covers, through the covers. Um, anyway. So they need to prepare the air. So they do a lot of stuff to measure it. They do a lot of pressure monitoring on, on two different sides of like the input. Uh, the, there's, a, there's a thermometer on the end of the hose in order to monitor the air. They know what the volume of air is that's going through. There are a lot of very, very smart people put together CPAPs. They know how the motor performs and how the motor controller performs and it's all kind of tied together by the system and monitored for your breaths in and out. So it'll, it'll actually change speeds when you're breathing out because you're fighting against the CPAP air. Um, we don't have, we don't have like a linear lung. Uh, so, you know, you have to be able to back off a little bit and let the person breathe. In addition to that, it, it moistens the air, moist. It moistens the air and it does that with a pool of water and a heating pad. And the, the, the air goes into this chamber where it's allowed to be exposed to slightly warm water. And then it is piped out and through the hose, and so with the Philips Dream Machine unit, it actually has this spiral around the hose that keeps it from crinkling, keeps it from, from, this is actually the inspiration for the computer, the springs on the computer project. But yeah, anyway, the, um, that keeps the hose from crushing, but they also figured, hey, why don't we put a heater wire through the whole thing? And that way we can heat it to be just the right temperature for the lungs. So that's why there's a heater in the hoses. Um, this one is not, it's just a, an extension, but, uh, it's also black, <laughs> so it'll look better on the printer. But yeah, so I need to get, I guess, well, we can probably print it. It'll probably be printed, but of the same dimensions as this, where it'll it'll adapt us from this rubber piece, this rubber isolation into whatever whatever this diameter is that this hose can, can link onto. Yeah, the, well, the Philips Dream Machine does. It does. This thing's designed to keep vibration away, and I, I want to preserve that. I want to preserve the vibration isolating uh, rubber mounts on this whole thing. So we actually did model, we actually did model our own little rubbery bubby bunkers, little rubber bubber buggy bunkers. Um, these link on to the three thingy jigs and provide us with a rubbly, bumply mount. So I did not model these because I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to find out where they are precisely. So we will have to give an outer radius to the clamps. <sighs> Those are going to be radial. So if we draw a circle in and out of that, and then we can do... Because the, the way it is in the old one, it's just like a, like a trough that this thing will fit into. And that holds on. Lowenstein sounds like a... I don't know what that sounds like. <laughs> Lowenstein. It sounds like a little bit like Lovenstein. A little bit like uh, Berenstein. Is it Lowenstein? Is that the name of the... <laughs> ah, I'm caught on my other uh, camera cable. Row, row. Let's get out of that. Give me this. There we go. Hopefully that doesn't disconnect. So the thought is, on the front plate of the Hymeria, well, either on the front plate or there's a there's there's actually a bottom mount. But I would have a fitting for the CPAP hose there. And that would have to like cross the filament in some way. Maybe I could have it drape in like that. And then when it lifts, it just needs to stay out of the way of the print. Actually, hold on a second. That's staying out of the way. <laughs> I could just rely on the CPAP hose to be CPAP hose. Uh, and that wouldn't move forward and backwards because the bed moves on this one. So all I need to do is clearance that. 
and it magically never hits. Look at that, perfect. So if I hold this in a particular way and it lifts, it stays vertical. Yeah. <laughs> so I can use that principle in order to keep this thing from hitting my printer. Look at that, it holds itself up. Now what if it moves back and forth? Uh oh, okay, that's maybe a problem. So I'll, <laughs> we'll have to figure those problems out in a little bit. Lerfenstein. Yeah, it's still Lovenstein. Uh, <laughs> Parent stain. So some of the properties of this hose I can kind of take advantage of, maybe. But before we get there, I need to make sure that I can adapt to it. Now, can I reuse this and shorten the hose? How does that work? It looks like there is like a plastic piece in there. That's possible. Oh, is it molded together? Might actually be molded together. There's either... I don't really feel a... German bear. I'm talking about Berenstein, Berenstein, and it's like a Mandela effect where people think it's one way when it's the other. I was just making that joke. I don't know if there's two pieces to this. I think it's kind of molded together, so I don't know if I can preserve this this nice fitting here. Damn it, stay on the desk. Stop it. Damn it. This thing will not listen to me. Okay. So, um, we'll start with the housing. We'll solve all those other problems later. That's basically, that's basically the way that I want to do it. Um, I guess I can set up a, the local store's Raspberry Pi, my God. Um, I don't want to make it the full length of this thing, but we'll just pull in those lengths, like the measurements of those lengths, and we'll use that as a basis by which to assemble our, our blower motor. So what I'm going to do is start a new document, and I'll start a new sketch, and that'll be on the X-Plane. So for those of you that are wondering how to use Fusion 360 and how, how things generally go, um, we're taking a little bit of a departure from the way that you typically do things. Uh, there are, the, you know, you can, you can take shortcuts all day. Uh, for instance, like I don't have all of the rail here for this design. I don't need it. In this case, I need to make sure that this doesn't collide with the axis. And so if I stay within the dimensions of the rail, I should be good. And I'm going to design it with the initial premise that it should fit here. And then we can move it in here and see how it works. But if I make the thing narrow enough, if I've got an idea of the narrowness of, the, of, of where I want to mount it, we can make all of our design decisions there. Uh, when I build stuff, I build stuff with a consideration for 3D printing it. I'm thinking about how many parts there are going to be, how I need to split it in order to get it to print cleanly, and uh, just, just that kind of thing. Like if I'm making a part like this, I'm assuming that I'm putting this part of that part on the print bed, and that way when I build up from there, the 3D printer has an easy time. It doesn't need to make support structures. Hey, what's up, Copper? I print with PETG, which is good for brackets on toys and stuff, because it's it's relatively strong. It does break apart eventually, but I mean, I could make I could make like like uh, car ramps out of this thing and and run my car over it, and it wouldn't break. It's also sterile, and it's also the same stuff that soda bottles are made out of. But for instance, this, I, I broke up into this many parts because I, I knew that it would look better if I printed this as the, uh, as the top and this as the base. And so then this one, the base down here, and then this is the top. My top layers look wonderful. It's the bottom layer that has kind of a weird texture to it on my printer. So I try to hide that. All right, so over here, I'm, I'm not complaining about that. Uh, over here, we're going to get our dimensions, and I'm going to make an initial design on this. The way that I would normally do it with, with a, a design is I would pull in the external parts, arrange them, and then uh, build up the brackets and the solids from there, right? So that way you have a, a logic to your timeline, and you can collapse parts of your timeline in order to make it uh, work out properly. You're not, you're just talking about anything right now. I, it's not even partially related to what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, pull in your parts, get them in position, do one of these uh, lockdown 
command things that that places everything in a place and then do your sketches from there but in this case we need to have a basis for our design and so our basis for our design is that it needs to fit on here and bolt to here so i am going to make a rail now i could pull in a rail i could pull in a, like one of these rails but i think it's going to be easier if i just do dotted lines i just do a, a a drawing with dotted lines and then we can kind of arrange things sort of in a, in a relative position to where they should go i hope that explains it well with fusion 360 the way you design stuff is you start with a sketch and then you extrude from the sketch and so if you've got other stuff that's going to influence how that sketch is going together or what the dimensions of that sketch is going to be you need to pull them in ahead of time and i guess we'll start here will be zero zero and so we we need to begin with a rectangle and so that rectangle is going to be from here and I think we'll I think we'll limit it to this rail and we'll see how how that looks so that distance is a weird number 127.86836 I mean giving it a little bit of wiggle room we should probably take that 836 and just get it out of there so we'll go 127 and then our vertical go back to measuring this should be a standard size this should be 20 millimeters A 40, okay, well, this is why we check. <laughs> 127 by 40. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 okay, there we go. 127 by 40. Now, we need the troughs, the, uh, the, the rail parts of the rail. So I need to keep in mind these two thingy jiggies, thingy majiggies. So where, ugh. This is, so this has like this, it has this chamfer on it. Oh, they made it a, 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 a chamfer. It's a, I thought it was a fillet. Are those even? Those are even, okay. So it's got that fillet on there that's gonna make this a little bit more difficult. But I guess what I can do is just go from flat spot to flat spot. <laughs> 7.37, what a measurement. Construction line, I'm gonna do 7.37. And then I'll go back and measure the thing again. And we'll measure it from flat spot to the other flat spot. Is that even a flat spot? Yeah, that's a flat spot. 12.63. 12.63. And that is there. And I guess I could just redo it from the top. I could mirror it on, on the, in the middle too. Yeah, maybe I'll just mirror it. We'll just do that. We'll just do a mirror line. And then I'll take, not that one, not that. I want the lines. So shift, right click and hold this one. Control shift, right click and hold. That's the problem with shift, click, and hold is that it doesn't let you access. I think it's actually just going to be easier to remeasure them because lines on top of lines, you have to hit shift and then left click, and it doesn't let you select multiple. Modeling a C wrap fan housing. C wrap sounds like a like a uh, a weapon, some kind of a crazy weapon. I didn't do that. My crap wasn't me. That was Phillips that did it. They're the ones that put foam in the air passageway. 12.63. Do, 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 do. That is absolutely not what I entered. Uh, 12, not 112. 63. Uh, and then 7.37. Doing this because it's easier than selecting those two. 7. 0.37. I can either draw lines directly out from it or I could just do like a three point rectangle. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to do a construction line and then this will just let us know where those are. Where the rails do exist. I probably don't need, well, I don't know. Do I need, uh, I don't know what I'll be able to see on the main thing. So maybe these should be regular lines so that when I finish the sketch, 
I will have an area by which to operate from. So there, there's where we're mounting this thing. Now with Fusion, Fusion really likes assemblies. So when you have parts that go into a project, you model those parts separately and bring them in. So those parts can come in and make sub-assemblies and then they can make main assemblies. So for instance, for the, the actual um, CPAP motor, the, the actual CPAP motor has a huge bolt beneath it. I don't really feel like modeling that right now. And I don't know if I, I don't really think I need to. If I just keep this thing out of center, then we'll be good. Just keep it a little bit out of center. Uh, and then I can avoid this thing hitting up against stuff. If this were a little bit more like tight of a, of a project, if things were like really compact, you might have a little trouble with it. And then for instance, I'm debating whether or not I want to make a sub assembly, whether or not I want to make a sub assembly and add the rubber mounts into this. But I think what, I, what I'll do is I'll just bring them all into the main drawing. We haven't saved this yet. Control S and this would be fan bracket. So 3D printer projects and then CPAP, VBAP, BAP, uh, we'll bring this part in and then position it over the area where we need to make our bracket. Try to make it make sense. Right now we're not exactly centered there, but we are vertical. We are the right uh, sort of axis where we need to be. And this is actually a decent position to be putting it at because it gives me a little bit of room. I may move it back just a tick, but having it sit at 70 millimeters to this thing's kind of relative weird center. It's pretty good. And it looks like we are going to be using most of this pad. So that's too far. So I'm going to do negative five. And I'll have a little bit of room in the back here for that big brass bolt that this thing incorporates. I think that's a good position. If I can get it mounted like that, I will be happy. Now, this is where the bracket really does become C-wrap because, uh, well, actually, let's get the, bu the, the bumpers in here before I fail chat and get this design completely wrong. How am I going to position these in order to fit properly? I think I need to use some positioning tools and put, I mean, it needs to be flat against there. So it needs to be some kind of a move command that's going to allow me to put a point to point, but then somehow rotate it into position. I guess that's totally possible. If I go point to point on this thing, although if I use the assembly tools, I think I can do plane to plane. Let me, let me um, duplicate the part first though. So to duplicate it, I can use move and then I can move instead of bodies, I want components because these go in as components when you drag and drop another thing in. And then I'll just do like a relative move that gives me all the controls. Now, right now that's just moving it because it's the move tool, but secretly the move tool is the copy tool. And for some reason it, it like, oh, you can't do that now, cancel. So I'm gonna move again, uh, click on components. And I can actually right click the component in order to do this, but I'm going to create a copy, move that over here. And there's my copy. So I'm gonna do that again. I'll do it from the original. It doesn't really matter which one I choose. They are copies after all from there. Create copy, and if you change the tool, it will uncheck this box, which is a little bit annoying, but. And there's the three that I need. All right, so I need to basically go plane to plane. I don't think that's really gonna do it. If I use the move tool, Components. Oh God. If, if, by the way, if you click something that has like a, a weird off axis movement like that, you can just go to like point to point and then back to the plane and it'll align with the, the origin axes. The useful thing. I could measure the angle of them and then move this to that angle and then do a center plane to center plane and that would align it properly. What is that one? Point to... That doesn't tell me. Yeah, I think that's my best bet is to measure these angles. So inspect, look at this line. 
That's very nice that you gave me the length of that line. Could I please like get the line in relation to length? None of none of the stats that I need. All right, so maybe if I do uh, where's my inspect? Go to this line and then go to this line. There we go. 140 degrees. Let's see if that works. So move. I want this plane over here. I want this to move negative uh, 140. That ain't right. Minus 90. There. <laughs> I love geometry. Okay, so now I can move it point to point. Uh, hey, move tool, you want to like show me? It, it dropped out of that menu. So move that point to point, and I take the center point of this thing. I think I got it. And I go to the center point of this thing. Boom. So there's our first mount in there. Now that's colliding, and Fusion won't say anything about it unless I do like a specific analysis. And it'll be like, oh no, this stuff is colliding. Um, but yeah, anyway, 140, and then we add, what is it? 360. So, <laughs> is it 120? I, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't remember geometry. And uh, Lord help you if you try to do math on stream, you're, you're in for it. 100 degrees that way. Well, that, that's facing this way. Modify, move, this thing, do one of these. Will be this. Wait, what was, what was it again? A hundred, uh, uh, okay, wait, cancel. I forgot what, I forgot, it was like a hundred degrees, wasn't it? this actually i should do it to this line then oh my god i can't see it because it's not letting me scroll fast enough where's my angle 10 degrees oh 360 350 is it 350 i'm geometry is going to be like the worst you just continue to cringe continue to cringe for me while we while we figure this out One seventy. Oh yeah, yeah, right. It's mostly flat. So instead of it's ten off from one eighty. Yeah, that's you're you're correct. <laughs> it's so bad. I'm so bad at this. Why did I become an engineer? Uh, move again. What this is doing is is basically the move command does not get its own timeline, uh, like block. What you do is you hit position at the end of that, and then that'll give you the sort of the end result of all the move commands. So things can get confused pretty quickly if you don't lock down your components. What I'm gonna do is do all of these moves and then um, initiate that command so that if I need to move any of this stuff in the future, I go to that step and it'll highlight all the things that have moved. Does that look right? Please zoom in a little faster. Looks good. All righty. Now for this challenge. Modify. No, wait. Measure first. This one. To this one. 20 degrees. Between there and there. So if I, yeah, if I just move it 20 degrees, right? So move, move, where did my command go? Move, copy, I guess I could use the M key too. This one, flat plane right there, go down to 20. 
That doesn't seem right. If between that and that, and that's off by 90, so if I go 70, there we go. Okay, okay. I probably got that wrong, but I'm going to try it anyway. <laughs> Move copy. I've not gotten any of these right. What number did I get? 70. Another 70. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 70, 70, 70. That looks like a 70 to you? That looks like a 70. Because it's, it's, it's off by 90, and so once you, you put the 90 in there, and then it's, it's on line with this, and then that's on the line with that, and it's 160 degrees. <sighs> Measures it for the opposite side. I don't know. Let's try it. Move copy. Point to point. Why are you not highlighting the point? Probably because we're going through that sketch. Oh, I didn't select the component. That's what it is. Okay, so now the component's selected, and I can go from that point. To this point. That appears to line up. Put an ortho. Yeah, it does. Okay. Okay, so now we have our rubber bumpers in position and where they should be, so we know what physically exists. Now we can actually design our brackets around it. This will be a hell of a thing. What in the world? Now, do I want to do this in one or two pieces? I think maybe I want to do it in one piece, and that'll print from the print bed. So maybe one piece with a facade on the back. I can put like a screwed facade on the back in order to hide the, uh, the funky printer base uh, pattern. And that can just be two pieces, and then, and then I can sandwich the motor controller, or maybe just the wires for the motor controller, in those two pieces. Yeah, I think that'll actually, I think that'll actually work. So, on to a sketch, because this is just our model. But if there is a reference, I don't know what I said. <laughs> I have no idea what I said. And I could maybe get like a little car air filter and put it on the outside of this thing. It doesn't really need much. Or just leave it open. Let it suck in a bug. Get a bug in my print. So let's see. First of all, I need and sketch. And I guess I'll put the sketch on this plane, on the, on the front plane. Oh, wait. Capture position. I forgot to do that. Um, yeah, so now that's a step on the timeline that I can go back to if I need to reposition anything. I just finished the sketch by initiating an appearance. There we go. Okay, so now these are physical objects that are actually there, and as of the sketch time, they are still there. I don't know if I have access to the geometries on these things. If I start a circle, yeah, there's no selectable center point on that circle. So in order to get that, I need to project some kind of a geometry. And the geometry that I want to project is basically just any of these round pieces here because they will have a center point. So I'll just take this one right there and we project that in. And now I have a dot right here. And so I've got a center point. These aren't in here yet either. So I'm going to take this probably... Well, there, there isn't really, I can take the whole thing, I guess, plan around that. I'll just take the whole of it. Doot, doot, doot. Doot, doot. I'm actually going to need this too. So I'll take all of that stuff and project it in. That way it will be represented in this drawing and I can, I can give it like a radius around there uh, in order to make the little mount pieces. We did all that work last time to make this easy. Take that out, and we just basically go to probably any of these points here, although we are going to want to have this having like a little bit of a, like a radius out of this thing. So if I actually take 
a line from this. Now, I think two or three millimeters is probably thick enough for a mount. I would be surprised if it wasn't. I'm going to take a construction line from here to here. And now I'm going to measure a line that is, oh, two or three millimeters. What are we going to do with this? I think two millimeters, because that gets us to the middle of the mount. And uh, how far out do these? Yeah, so the, um, the screw holes stick into the mount a little bit. They, they kind of overlap. And these little screw tabs. And you can see that following that radius, they would kind of hit here. So I think two millimeters is going to push it. It might be a little close for these. Might be good to measure these off of the center and put a construction line there. How about that? How about that? That's a frame light. That's fine. Let's give that a little measurement. Yeah, I don't know about 35, but let's just put it to a number and that'll that'll save us a little aggravation. Three millimeters off of the cylinder. So if we take three millimeters off the cylinder, so let, before we, we'll come back to this, but first we'll do um, project this. Oh, I see, there's different geometries here. So I'll project these outer ones. Those will just give me like a keep out area. And I can do offset. Do I have to do them individually? Yeah. Negative three. Well, actually, I could just do it with one of them. So let's undo that. Uh, actually, yeah, redo that line. I can just take this one over here. So I'm going to project the big one, the big, more circular one. And I'll do an offset of three. Make that into a construction. There will be a bit of a construction line overlap, though. I could just project that and then go off of there. Maybe I should do that. There was overlap. I was told there was overlap. For shame, did I get some of my dimensions wrong? Yes, I did. The rubbly thing goes all the way to the edge of that uh, angled piece. I think my depth of the, of the rubbly piece is wrong. Because that's, that's not what we've got in the other drawing. Let us visit that. Oh, let me finish the sketch over here before we, before we move on from there. And then I can go to... Nope. Nope. Didn't I just open it? Yeah, rubbly bumpy. So that depth is likely wrong. So I can take a rubble bumper, the calipers, and let's see what that measures up to right now. Seven point five. Oh wow! It, it's like the whole thing is hollow. Okay, so that's where that's where we went wrong. Seven millimeters. So it's actually seven millimeters depth. So what do I need to get there? Four point three. So I'm going to hit extrude. I'm going to select that face and go negative six point seven. That was the wrong answer. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Four point three five six seven. 3.2.7, 2.7, negative 2.7, negative 2.7. Okay, so now if I save this, what's going to happen is it will flag everything else that, is, that has been updated so that this can, can propagate to all the other designs. So if I go back to the fan bracket design, it's going to suddenly have exclamation point warnings all over the place, and I can just select the top of the menu tree or this or any of the other places it shows up, right click and go update external references. 
because of the way we assembled this, what should happen here, and it didn't, is that these should move in on those pieces. It should, it should still preserve those point-to-point -point moves. I guess it didn't. I guess it didn't. Now, we know the 4.3 number, but we're not, not necessarily going to update it that way. What's that? Norwegian IT web pages recommend the heating up cables and connector on the power supply of 40 XXs before plugging it in so it's easier to bend. What? How fragile is that connector that they've made? Good Lord. I'm going to go back into this step. All right, why is that visible? Why did it make that visible? Hold on, let's let's finish that. Let's go back into the bumper. That's not visible here. So what is Fusion doing? What's going on here? I'm going to hit save. Okay. Not you. This one. And then I'm going to go to Update External References. Did that move? Nah, it didn't move, but it did get rid of the sketch elements that were visible. I know, they've got that smaller connector and they didn't even bother to make it like a special, like, what they should have really done is made it have like glade pins, because those can carry a whole lot more amperage and a lot less area. But what they did is they insisted on keeping them as like Molex style pins, and they had more of them, but in a smaller space, and I guess they engineered it to be way too close to the amount of current. And then what happens because it's a connector, things go wrong. Like if you have multiple multiple uh, uh, power lines, if you're doubling up your power lines, they can partially disconnect. And then all of a sudden you have all of your current on one of your power lines. It's a really irresponsible design. Computers do it all the time. Graphics cards do it almost universally because they insisted on not having anything but 18 gauge on their power line wires. And it's dumb. Yeah, it's Fusion 360. Autodesk Fusion 360. It's really dumb. And so with the designs that I've done with computers, I've still used their connectors, uh, but instead I have replaced... Why didn't that update? Wait a minute, what the hell? Why is that still broken? What's going on, AutoCAD? Why are you doing this to me? We fixed this. What's going on? I even brought the fixed one in. Oh, do we not? S I didn't save. That's what the little star means. That I, it means that I didn't save. All things considered, though, so far I've done everything correct to the point where um, it should be moving those to the point where I put them. I believe I instructed you to get the latest version. I don't think I was joking when I said that. Hello? This isn't fair. You can't treat me like this. I very much dislike when it does this. What? Hey! You were not selected. Jerk. Save. Okay. Back to here. Get latest. Excuse me. Excuse me. I wish to speak to a manager. I, okay, so what I did is I clicked on the extrusion step that represents that piece being made. And I looked through and I clicked all three of the... See, this one unclicked. This is the first one that I clicked. And it unclicked itself. I want this, that, and this. That one unclicked as well. Those three extruding. Click OK. And that should staple it up. And I click save. I, you guys saw me do that earlier. Get latest version. 
Uh, maybe the projection broke it. Really shouldn't have, though. He's still fixed. Still fixed. No more shenanigans. Why would I redo it in a different CAD program? Because I had one problem that I fixed? Is that really justification for me to uproot my entire design? I guess let's get, let's get to importing this into Blender. Let's just get started. That shouldn't be too hard. It'll take four streams. All right, so these things did not move inwards, which they by all means should have done, um, but we'll, we'll deal with that. Uh, I want to get, I want to actually get the projections out of this sketch, so I'm going to delete those. Now keep in mind your sketch exists on the timeline, uh, so the reason that those two sketches are uh, separate from one another is that they, they occur at different times. One sketch happens in order to give me my, my base position, and then I pull in the files, save their positions, and then I make the second one, uh, the second drawing, at that point in time. So the timeline is very important. And if I go back and edit this sketch, because maybe some dimension is different than what's actually there, right? You run into that all the time. Oh, I printed it, and this is a little bit wrong, so it needs to be actually this distance. And then you go and you double click on your design. If you've done other steps where you're pulling stuff in and positioning it, that hasn't happened yet. So if you need to base a dimension on that, you need to, and, and what I do is every time I pull something into the drawing, I go back to right before this positioning step. That way, those other files exist in your, in your design so that you can base your, your brackets and stuff like that on their positions. Otherwise, you're rewinding the timeline and it doesn't exist. It's just important to think like that while you're going through a design like this. You could also try to redo it. I already did that. We should do a pen display and ZBrush and make it out of clay. No. <laughs> All right, finish the sketch. So now I need to go back and I need to edit the position of these things. So I can go doot doot. And now I'm back in time. My other sketch doesn't exist yet. And it shows me by highlighting what components I have moved in this step. And it's unfortunate that it can't preserve the, um, what do you call it? The, the point to points. What I can do is I can just go to the free move, click on that and just bring it out without changing the angle. That way I can look into this thing and I can access that plane again. So I go back to point to point and I choose my point. I guess that point didn't exist. It's technically a new, it's a new face there to there. That looks like exactly what we have. <laughs> that resembles it precisely. Oh yeah, I need to put the thing on it. Uh, here, I need the special one. I need the Adam, the, the Brady Bunch view. Ooh, there's a, there's a thing that'll date you. Uh, where is that? There. No, that doesn't have the desktop on it. I think maybe, maybe I have on this one, I have the, do I have the scope? Pedal. Wait, when did I make that? That's a weird one. Uh, do, 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 there. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's, not, it's not inverted. Hold on. Transform. 180. There we go. Uh, the distance might be a little bit wrong, huh? It's a squishy object. It's hard to actually measure what that distance is. We'll take this for for our reference, though, because I mean I don't know if the there's a little bit of fish eyeing going on in the lens or something. Maybe it's swamp gas. Probably swamp gas. But I think that's pretty accurate. Do 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 boop. All right, so then we move this one based on this. And we move that away just so that I can see what I'm doing. We go point to point. We go from point to 
point. Click OK. It's annoying that I maybe I could have press pulled. If I press pulled the face, maybe it would have seen it as the same face instead of just extruding down. I think that's exactly what happened. Instead of extruding down, I should have used uh, uh, push pull, which is where you push a face or pull a face. It's you know it's not rocket science, but what that'll do is that'll bring other geometries with it. It's a it's kind of a neat tool uh, in in something like this. And if I had to edit this part in order to have that face be further down push pull press pull would have um would have preserved the face uh, like whatever id the program is assigning to the face and then it would um i wouldn't have to do this it would still have the two faces with points that it could associate with one another for the attachment Ugh. and then our tangent or target point rather right there Okay, Okay. so we're going to roll off of this design, and hopefully it'll be the right dimensions. Um, I don't think it'll be too big of a print to do to iterate through a little bit. So if that distance still needs to be modified, um, I guess it's not the end of the world. We'll make like a, like a basic bracket out of it, and then I'll throw that onto the, um, onto the printer, and we can use that as a size guide. We still need one more component. Uh-oh. We need the thing on the end of this. All right, so I'm going to save this. And we need to, oh yeah, finish position, save. I need one more thing before we start designing the bracket. I need the thing that this, the, the rubber piece that goes on here, which is its own completely ridiculous thing to design, but it's circles within circles. So we can just uh, <laughs> whip up a representation of this thing. Oh my goodness. I guess I'll do the the plastic ring first. It was definitely not 25.34, you jerks. It's an inch. It's a it's an inch. It's a square inch. It fits in, it, oh Jesus. <laughs> Who made all these standards? It's like inch and millimeter for everything here. Like an American-made product, but it's Phillips. What are you doing? Maybe the standardization of the CPAP hose was at fault here, because that, like, I know you guys can't see the whole thing, but. Oh, you monsters. You monsters. You made it inch. <sighs> All right, let's start a new drawing here. Hold on, it's kind of like stuffy in here. I'm going to open the window a little bit. Open the window, open the window. I got to open the window. I'm going to open the window. Oh, God, the window's closed. No wonder I'm suffocating. Give me oxygen! All right. Well, no, because I, I typically operate in metric. Um... It's not like I'm incapable of operating in either. Uh, it's just annoying when we have to go to inch. And with fusion, with hiccuping, um, with fusion, uh, you can enter, you just put IN at the end of it and it'll convert it to metric for you, which could have saved us a, a uh, an, what is it? A, what was it? A moon, a moon landing thing or whatever? A moon probe? What did we launch? But yeah, one of the one of the cool things about Fusion is that I can go to my sketch plane here, and if I have a one inch ring, I can just go boop, and I can do one in, and it puts twenty five point four zero on the clock. Was it a Mars probe? I don't I don't remember what it was. I don't know nothing about nothing. Not ch no Challenger was O rings. We had to take a class in that. I'm getting 25.42. That point 0.2 isn't very reliable because this thing can easily flex, and it just did. Yeah, we're going to call that 25.4. And then let's see, that's, the, that's a rubber lip. Although, do we model it as two pieces? Because it really is. Oh no, they're like linked together. I'm not going to bother with that. There's like a there's like a gear pattern on the inside of this thing in order to keep it from twisting, I guess. We don't we don't need that. I don't need to model that. No, no, no. 
So then there's a, a ring that pops out of this ring, and that is... 2323 and then there's the inside of this thing I'll instead of basing it off of the outside I'll just do my own try not to squish it too much it doesn't this this measurement here doesn't it's not that important so 18.62 I'm going to make that 18.6 327 million? Oh my god. Oh boy, what is the rest of this going to be though? Because this, this is like primarily a vertical thing and it has all kinds of different dimensions to it. And it looks like, hold on, what does that look like? Okay, so that's going to be another tube with a thickness on it. And that thickness is going to be another line. And then I've got what's basically a revolve with a rounded piece and that has its own inner dimension as well that's like an offset oh how's that gonna work it's not like i can't like chamfer it i don't think i can chamfer it that may have to be a separate sketch that i revolve in order to join two pieces so we'll have a sketch from one side sketch from the other and our base length is going to the offset of the sketch is going to be the, the depth of this thing. 16 millimeter. I'm willing to call that 16 millimeter. Yeah. So let's finish that sketch and make a new one. Should we offset that? There's no possible way that a CPAP hose adapter for the Philips Dream Machine is on McMaster Car. There's, there's just no way. No, no. We're going to model this because it's going to take me less time than searching for it. We searched GrabCAD. We searched a couple other places for this motor as a model. Couldn't find it. So, uh, listen. <laughs> don't think that I don't... Don't think that I don't... Well, of course they have Swedish fish. Thorlab gives you Swedish fish with your with your uh, orders. Offset plane from here. We're talking a fairly, fairly popular candy versus like uh, uh, Philips, the company engineer deep deep within the center of an office building has never seen the light of day with a bunch of doctors making a CPAP machine in a foreign country using parts catalogs for things that we will never be able to... We're talking parts catalogs where the companies have made a deal with each other for like millions of dollars. Oh, you're going to manufacture with our parts? Here's our catalog. Like, there's no way that they would have it on like McMaster car. Are you kidding me? All right, so let's do the other side of this thing and then we'll extrude them and they'll meet up in the center. Well, we'll extrude them and then there will be a big gap between the two and we can just make uh, a couple arcs on it and that'll, that'll join everybody together. So I'm gonna make this sketch, even though we're staring at, down at it from the top, I'm gonna not look at the other sketch while I do this. God, I've been basting in my own, my own smells for a little while because of the, uh, the window not being open. Ugh. So, first circle is not going to be the total overall outside dimension. It's not 22, I don't think. Twenty-four? What about TPU Swedish Fish? I don't know if you have. So that's like 20.4 or 0.804 of an inch. Is it 0.8 of an inch? Is it an eighth of an inch? <laughs> so if that is... 
one eighth inch. Is that a quarter? No way, that's way bigger than that. Are you kidding me? No, no, no. 20.4. So that's 20.4, and then the inner diameter, or no, that was the inner diameter. That's what I just measured. Yeah, 20.3 or 4. And then the outside of this thing is two millimeters above that. So that would be, hey, Mahalo, 24.4. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, uh, and then 24.4. Seems to be pretty accurate. Might be off by a little bit. And then our next ring, before that little shroop de hoop Twenty and a half. That's not enough. I mean, there's it is thin material. It's just very hard for me to measure without deflecting it. Yeah, I'm actually off by quite a bit. Oh, but then it crushes. <sighs> Twenty millimeters, but that's smaller than the than the inside that I measured. Make Swedish fish out of sugar. Wait, sugar and chili, what? It's kind of an accursed thing that you're putting together there. What did I measure on the other one? Eighteen point seven. This one is wider. Yeah, that's definitely wider. So I've got to figure out what the thickness of this rubber is because it's a uh, it's kind of eluding me, and uh, I'm getting like impossible measurements out of this thing. It's tough. Well, the entire inside is the same, but... But, like, you see the jaws are crushing it a little bit there. If I back off, it just falls out. That crushed it only a tiny bit. I got 20, almost 22, but I think 22 is wrong. And then this one, we got 24. 24, 22... And then that connector has a different thickness on it. It's very thin. So okay, 24 to 22. The, the important dimensions are the, the two ends of it, but and the length. Twenty four, twenty two, and then we get to the um, rounded part. The the yeah, okay, okay finish. So this is going to look like that extruded for two point three, but then there's a, a a very rounded edge on it. Oh, internet died. I already yelled at you, Copper, for talking about random stuff. <laughs> Having your own conversation. I'm gonna call that two millimeters. So let's uh extrude the top first and we'll come down to the bottom. So we're gonna extrude this and this two millimeter, negative two. I have not been able to like figure out how to do all of the mechanical analysis stuff on this. So we're basically making this in uh, just like a very simple manner. I'm not defining this as rubber. So from the base to the beginning of that, uh, I want to say seven millimeters is a little bit tall, but No, that's about seven. So this thing is already two, so we're gonna go five millimeters from there. So extrude this from object. And we're gonna go negative five. 
That seems like it's a little much. But I measured seven into the into the bendy part. Brain's only in tangents today. I have had those days. Okay, next from the other side, uh, and I'm gonna come up to meet it, and then we'll do another sketch that has one of the swoops in it, and we rotate the swoop 180 degrees, and then we do a bunch of chamfers on it. So from there to this ring, that's a tough measurement to get because it's very, very small. There's almost nothing here. I have to measure this to that. And I guess I could extrapolate the measurement from, or interpolate the measurement from the uh, measurements of a bunch of other stuff, but. And like that barely gets what I need to be measured. <laughs> oh my God. Could I use the maker scanner to figure this out? No. I think I bumped it. I'm gonna say half a millimeter. We'll see how this works out. So I'm gonna extrude this 0.5, and then I'm going to extrude, yeah, that's gonna be this and this from object, start object. And then the distance we go, oh my goodness. How is that going to work? Well, that's going up to... Oh, that's actually uh, the ring. So that's 1.5 for the solid white ring that's going to enable us to either clip this. There might be, a, it might be a clip, might be the best way to do it. So that something puts a little pressure on this in order to get the seal to seal. We don't need, it doesn't need to be super duper duper tight sealing, but uh, it would be kind of neat if we had it able to do anything. So I'm going to extrude that other ring, and this is going to be from object there, 0.5 again. Okay, so now what's left is the connecting medoodle. Let's see, that's one and a half by one and a half by one and a half. So four and a half. And the total distance that I'm getting here is somewhere around six. So really it's that small. I'm gonna to try to measure it directly. It doesn't seem, it doesn't seem, it's so hard to get these measurements. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm measuring. It seems like it's three. What happens if I do extrude? Oh wait, I don't have the dimensions of the inner part in here, do I? No, I don't. I've run out of lines. I've run out of lines! Go all the way back to the beginning. I need one more diameter. I know you're not 19.16 because you're first, well, that's 18.6. 19.6. Six. We'll have to correct some of our numbers on this. So I take this one and I believe, well, wait, what's the outer diameter of, hold on a minute. Oh no, it's an inner diameter, right? So it would be that thick. It's a one millimeter thick piece of rubber. That doesn't seem quite right. Uh, and then we start from object here and we go three. And then we get our swoops in there. But that doesn't, those are, that is actually a little bit larger. That is actually what's there. So that, and then if I do that thing. Get in the middle so it's a little bit it's hard to see but that that looks kind of accurate yeah kind of when i soften everything up it'll look a little bit better this is on the exhaust side of the blower this is what meets the blower up to the body of the bracket so i need something that's going to hit an arc at a certain point and that arc at a certain point is going to be at 
it does stick into everything. 16 and a half. It's not, it doesn't need to be incredibly accurate. It's those rings on the top and the bottom that need to be accurate. Actually, only this ring down here and the height are all I really need. So the, the most, of, most of what I'm doing here is just making it look right. <laughs> I just gotta make it look cool, you know? So now I need a sketch that's gonna be on this plane. And that needs to have an arc between these two. And I need a center point between these two. So I'm gonna project this one on this one. I guess it I guess it'll be the halfway point. It might not it might not actually be the halfway point, but I, I'll make it the halfway point, I guess. And then we need half of the 16.2 that I got, right? Is this right? The 8.1, it's probably eight and eight. So I'll go over here, eight. And then I'll create an arc. Three points here to here. And that's not what we had. That's not it at all. <laughs> that, that's not it at all. That's not even close. Yeah, exactly. Looks like it kind of slopes downward and around. So it's kind of like circular up until it gets to itself and then it slopes in. How do I model that? Hmm. Kind of comes down to where that is after like a certain distance. I don't know what that distance is. I know that inner radius of eight. So maybe if I do halfway and then I go that distance again. So if I go uh, distance of half of this, 3.5, oh God, 3.5, 1.75. Actually, I go up. Well, that would be here. So if I do, no, but then that the circle is different because the circle... It doesn't do, it doesn't, because if I do this here, uh, arc, three point, and I go boop to boop, then that doesn't quite work, because it's, it's got like a slope here. So it's not, it's not really going to meet up in the middle here. I feel like it, it wants to meet up with an object that's its size, and then there's just a line diagonally from that. I just don't know what that, where that line is located. Well, uh, listen, there's a little bit where I need to figure it out, too, where the fun is, is me figuring it out. Arcs and tangent constraints. Well, I mean, like, I'm trying to ignore the chamfers. That needs to slope diagonally and then into the circle, and the circle has kind of its own idea of how big it is. Hmm. This would probably make itself if I had all of the, the devices in here. Like I, I had to do an outside radius of the uh, of the end of the blower a certain distance. And then I put the collar on the back of it and then so that I had the blower there and I had one millimeter thickness on the rubber and then I had the other piece of the enclosure with this thing coming in and then all that stuff I have to tie together and then this is where we are. I don't know. Give it like one millimeter, then do an arc from there. Because it's tough for me to model that arc. I don't know. I don't know the specs on the circle. If I had like all kinds of different measurements here. Hold on. Well, one other thing I need to do is uh, get the the inside projection. So I need to project a this and this. So there's both of our working points here, and I go to the side like that, go back into orthographic. So what I'm what I'm saying is that it, it looks like it's like this, and then and doing this without any measurements is probably exactly the way that I should be doing it, to be honest. 
that's kind of what it looks like, only my point in space. Is like that. <laughs> Not putting a condom over this thing. Uh, let's see. I mean, all things considered, I, I could actually work with that. It's a little arbitrary, though. Let's see what a box looks like on top of that. Oops. If there's like a logical dimension box. There's not. <laughs> there's not, there's not. 1.322, 1 1.245. Yeah. 1.3, 1.3. Maybe we just leave that and I just go doot, doot. And then I do an offset and it matches up with that. I don't, can I make that match up? Can I offset two here? I can't. Um, measure from here to here. 0.549. Is that going to actually make it meet up? I would rather. I would rather that line go to that point. Oops. Uh, redo that. Boop. Front. This. This. Chain selection, offset position one millimeter. See, that puts it directly there. But it does not put it directly there, does it? Oh boy. This is where it gets challenging, sort of. What does it look like inside? This is probably some weird feature of the CAD. That looks like a torus inside. It doesn't look like a fancy sloped weird thing. It looks just like a, t wait a minute. No, wait, that, does that have a little extendy on it? A little bendy extendy? It does look a little extenderated. Cause maybe they chamfer their way out of this. Like, okay, let's throw out all this all this stuff that I did. Goodbye. And then let's take arc three line here to here. I think I think this is how we're cooking. What is the radius on this thing? Two point one two eight. So if I take that and I make that a radius of two, uh, constraints. Or no, uh, distance. R for radius. I'm not a sketch palette. How do I fix this to a radius? I can, I can do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I guess I can't. But if I offset this by this diameter, I bet you I can draw a line from here to wherever, like tangent, and then it'll it'll look like what we have. It seems like this is like a weird mold part that kind of it looks round on one side, and then it's it's a little weird on the other, or maybe it's a chamfer that meets them together. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to offset this. Problem is, I want it to meet up with this. So I guess I've just got to measure it. I think that's a millimeter. Yeah, it's half a millimeter. Okay. So if I take... <laughs> this is this is really kind of bending things around. I don't know if this is, this is good. If we do this as 0.5... <laughs> I spent ages longer removing things from models. But that would meet up here. That's the problem. 
Man, this is weird. <laughs> Cause yeah, now we've got we've got a nice little like line there, but this needs to move up and this would need to move to meet it, which doesn't really work. It needs to be a different radius in order to be from there. If this were like that. And then I don't think this is what's there. I don't think this quite does it. I don't think that's quite right. There we go. <laughs> I might just accept that. I might just accept this janky thing and just call it a day. I don't know what the hell they were doing here. You can't accept that. No, I might. I might. That's no, it's totally wrong. How am I doing this? You see what I mean though, right? It looks like it looks like it like if they did maybe they did like a chamfer to match it up, but it would be like a tangent coming out of the end of the arc. And this inside, it's just a torus. Unless it's or a toroid or whatever. Unless that's a larger piece than this one, it really does just look like that. And, you know, I don't need to pay lip service to the uh, exact dimensions of that part of the part. I know that it plugs in up to that edge, so maybe I do need to... Well, up to here. I mean, let's measure that inside. Maybe that'll give me a little bit of insight here. Everything's rubber, so it's, like, impossible to actually figure out. It's six millimeters. Can I get length? I guess I gotta go solid to solid. Seven. So it's actually one millimeter back. Okay. Oops. Not a solid. What about the other side? Yeah, everything's rubber. Everything's rubber. 5.16 So let's do five five millimeters. 0.16 is I believe negligible, although I could be wrong. Uh so it's half a millimeter up from that point. I'm doing 3.1s, but I don't think I need that outer one. It's basically this point here needs to meet this point at an arc. Now, what is the center diameter of this thing? What is the bottleneck? I'm getting 16 and a half, but I don't know if I'm deflecting it at all because it's it's really soft rubber. Almost 17. So if I did my eight point again, let me try that. Well, actually, I don't know because the center isn't going to match up, is it? It's not going to be the center between these two things. Maybe it'd be the center between this and this. And then it would be eight from the center of this. How do I model that? That's crazy. Two point rectangle. This is getting stupid and I'm just basically trying to find some kind of piece. Would it be from here or from here? 
but it's this and this. And I'm, I guess I'm going eight out from that. So wherever this center is, doesn't matter which one I choose, bring it over here and then make a, another line, another construction line. This is stupid. That's eight from here on that new center. Did I do that? Wait, that was still center on the thing. That doesn't make any sense. Hold on a sec. There to there. Go to the center here. Oh, no, that wasn't centered. It, it, that didn't have a center dialog. Okay, yeah. So take this and then go eight. I, I know this seems complicated, but I'm just grasping at some way to sort of reverse engineer the design and get it to look right. That's what it looks like from the inside. If I project that out a half a millimeter, I don't think that will meet up. I'm just gonna try it. Well, it almost meets up on one of them. Oh shit, sorry. Yeah, this is I mean, this is getting a little weird right now because we have we have an angle coming down off of that and it really doesn't look like this is one millimeter off but that's what I measured so I measured the from the inside to the beginning and the end of the of the radius that I saw on the thing and so I got one millimeter approximately and half a millimeter approximately then I measured the inside of the bottleneck which was about 16 but it's such soft rubber that I don't know what I'm uh, if I'm measuring it, it quite exactly right. I figured it's a it's a half a millimeter, but when I do a half a millimeter on this, I end up getting like a gap up here. But what we observed is that this comes off like that. And although it has a little bit of a radius, and I don't know what part of the radius I'm measuring from, um, it certainly doesn't look like this. And I'm tempted to just freehand this whole thing. Because the, the arc does not go in like that, but it seems like it's a consistent thickness of rubber. So what am I doing wrong? <laughs> I mean, all my measurements are wrong. All of my measurements are not the right measurements, but... Well, and that's why I was accepting scuffed design into my into my heart of hearts. I think that's a lot of what's happening here is that we've got, we've got like a chamfer into a round on this side, but it's also represented on the inside. So I don't know how that matches up. It's not like the thickness isn't wildly deviating through this area. Oh, let me see. So if I do a round into that on the two different pieces, and this is allowed to be kind of a weird thickness, because that's what I did before. I did it before. My problem is that the inside piece looks totally consistent, and that's sort of what I was trying to reconcile. What if I make that 0.5? pushes that down like that, and then we get another radius, but it starts from here and goes to what? Can't be that distance, but it... Exactly, just what I need. <laughs> Doesn't work at all. All right, I'm doing it by ear. Screw it. Doing it by ear. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All of you go away. Oh, there was a nice little line segment in there. That's always nice to have. <laughs> Those will mess you up. In Fusion, it expects you to uh, make lines in a certain way. And if you don't, you get these little tiny line segments from when it, it perceives you as double clicking. And uh, they can really mess you up because you're like, wait, all that it didn't it didn't match up. And it turns out that yeah, this is a problem with. Oh, 
Oh, you mean do it with full circles and then use a trim tool? The only problem with that is that the stuff that I base things on will go all over the place. What is this? There you go. Create arc three point from here to here. It looked pretty rounded, didn't it? it Look like that. With like a seam in the middle. I don't hear no farts. If you're making them, I'm not hearing them. I'm doing this by eye. That is so cursed. Maybe that'll do. It still looks for like it just looks terrible. But that's kind of what it is. It's kind of terrible. I mean, does that look like that looks kind of like a Bezier? Could I should I do that with a Bezier or a tangent going inwards and then a little arc and then I round off the the corner? I think I just round off the corners anyway and hope that it looks right. Let's just try it. Let's just try the jank. See if I can't get this to meet up a little bit better. Like there. It looks bad, but let's just see. So I need to do a revolve. I need to grab this stupid looking thing. Oh, did it not close up the top and the bottom? I guess these don't count. Or that one doesn't count. This one... Okay, that one's all closed up. Okay, finish. Oh, if I meet those two points up... Wait a minute. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! What are you... Ah! Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's the answer. Maybe. Okay, so we'll hide this in all the chamfers, so I'm going to revolve. It still is not letting me select it, huh? There we go. Profile, axis, and then we select our origin here, and then we join, that's correct, and I click OK, and now we have one body in this drawing, and I can smooth all this stuff up and make it look like rubber. Oh my god. <laughs> that was really annoying. Hopefully it represents what we have. Let's get the sketches out of here. It does look pretty close, so I'm basically going to take every sharp edge and round it. Okay, every sharp edge, let's go. Cool, that'll do. Then I do another one here. No, I can't do half and half. I guess I don't have enough room. Hold on, let's go. This one out by 0.5 and this one in oh come on oh why are you wait why aren't you a chamfer wait you're not supposed to be like this what the it, it shows a oh a tangent that was weird why is it all messed up? Cancel. That's weird. Okay. Fill it. Not chamfer, fill it. 
Okay, that one's fine. I don't know, something messed it up. So that one shouldn't need anything, but the outside does. So we'll give that just a little bit. How rounded does that one look? Eh, maybe a little smaller than that. Maybe 0.75. That's okay, that's okay. Smooth that one a little bit. Oop. This one comes out. And then this one goes in so that it looks like a rounded pad. So it gets all the way down to the base, like that, actually. And then this one the same. The other that other piece is a sharp edge because it's a piece of plastic. And then this one gets the same 0.5. And then this one too, 0.5. Oh, outside edge too. Point 0.5 might be a little bit much, but it is kind of what's there. And then the ever important appearance menu. I can <laughs> I'm going to go into chess piece uh, modeling now. Plastic. Well, actually, rubber. Rubber, rubber. I don't think we have rubber on here. Fabric, glass, liquid, metal, mirror, miscellaneous, air. <laughs> rubber? I saw rubber. Of course, this isn't defining what actually the, the material is. This is defining what it looks like. So really, it should I should just do gray plastic. So we'll do plastic. And we'll choose opaque. And then glossy gray. Yeah, it's, well... It is kind of matte, actually. There is a gloss to it. It's like a semi-gloss. A little bit glossy gray. Yeah, that, that's a little bit closer to what it looks like. It's a little glossy for me, but... Then we go to... Uh, what is it? A different kind of plastic, uh, like a nylon. We'll do a nylon 6.6. I have to download that. Uh, yeah, I'll just give it ABS. So ABS, and I want that up here, but I only want to do faces because we're only doing three of the faces in this in this material. Because everything else is rubber. So it's a little lighter than the real thing, but if I enable my camera, if I enable my camera, the appearance menu is the most important part. It really is. With a space-aged egg cup holder. Egg would crush this. This would crush under the weight of egg. How cursed is this thing? Anyway, um... Bonk. There's the bell. When it cools down in here, there's some piece of metal that goes bonk. It might be uh, one of the... I think it might be the acetone can behind me. Just uh, like the, the outside edge of it. Like the acetone heats up and expands and there's just enough pressure to make it go bonk. <laughs> oh, uh oh, what did I just move? Oh, we got to get rid of that top edge. Okay. Which one is that? And anything else? Like, what is. What about these inside edges? Yeah, those have got that. What about the top edge? King me. 
That one does have a softness to it. It's just that one that has a like a hard edge. I think that accurately enough represents what we have here. In spite of my really crappy dead reckoning of this curve right here, I think it's I think it's pretty close. I love being able to do this with the software. <laughs> Just do a direct comparison. Hey, what is it? Does it look quite like the right thing? Is that is that what I got? Oh, that nub in the middle seems to be a lot larger than what I give it credit for, huh? At least from this side. That ain't quite look right. I don't really think it matters all that much, though. If it's slightly... Oh, wait, no, I'm looking at the wrong end. Sorry. Looks like this from this end. That looks a lot closer. Yeah, there we go. I just didn't do that one little ridge, the little ceiling ridge. Yeah, on this side, it looks like that. And on the other side... And this takes into account perspective and everything, too, which is kind of nice. It's not orthographic. Like that. That doesn't look white from here. Wait a second. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Wait, what? Oh, I see. You have to catch it. You have to catch the reflection just right. No, it looks like I missed at the top layer. Okay, back to the appearance menu, and I'm just going to do faces. Do that. There we go. There we go. Look at that. We found a mistake just by me being vain and trying to make sure it looks exactly like its real-life counterpart. Eh? 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 Can I cook or can't I? Okay, so save this part. It's a boot. So this is the this is the CPAP uh, blower fans uh, vibration mounting. This thing is designed to allow the fan to wiggle around and not make a ton of noise. It works in conjunction with these little rubbly baby bubby movers. Bubby bumper, buggy bump, blah, 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 blah. Um, it works with these in order to make sure that this thing makes no noise at all, which is important to me because the fan in this system is supposed to make no noise at all. So that all works out. Let's get this into our main drawing. Untitled. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a minute. Rename. Rubbly Bubby. Bump, bumpy. Where's our rubbly bubbly bumpy? Uh, and let's get that into the main bracket design file here. Let's get the microscope off of the screen too. Or with our rubbly blubby bubble. Uh, microscope. There we go. Boop. I feel like I need to have a um, Steam Deck page for stream deck page for each scene that way i would have all of the relevant activations and disactivations would have made a plastic cone of shame what do you mean for what this is i mean the the other part is like if i was really like super duper min maxing and engineering this what i would do is i would just have a um here microscope where is that We'll just go to this scene. What I, what I would design in CAD would just be the relevant pieces, and the relevant piece is really only this ring. I would design this ring and then just a cylinder coming down from it that would then model this piece that goes on to the end of the fan. And that's all I would need. All I would need is the distance from the rubber to the ring, or from the, from the fan's collar to the ring is really what I need. And that's probably how we're going to place this in the main drawing. But it's fun to reverse engineer somebody's mechanical system and figure out exactly what they were doing with their numbers and how cursed everything becomes. Because, yeah, this basically fits directly over and has this almost the same radius. It's only a little bit larger. And then from the back collar, I could just measure the position to that face. And that's 16 and a half millimeters. So 16 and a half millimeters is what I'll need to put in there. It's not a boot. 
So we pull this one in. Actually, wait, first we... Can I make like a 16 millimeter offset on this? Minus 16.5. I don't think that's going to benefit us until I put it into center position, I think. We'll try it. Uh, so I'll take this thing into the main drawing. And we will flip it. And then I can do... I can locate this center... Oh, it's not letting me do that as an origin point. Hold on. I'm going to hold down control and then move over to here. That's how you select the centers of stuff because it'll your mouse will mouse over a bunch of different faces and then it'll forget that you want to center it. So you hold down control and then move it into the center. So if I go from here, hold down control, click the center. That's that mounted directly and this should be 16 and a half. Eh, it's not. <laughs> it's a little bit further out. A little bit further out. Which, this distance is not a lot, but I did measure from the front face. Let me redo the measurement. Actually, first let's get rid of the offset plane. Yeah, we don't need the offset plane. Do I control Z or do I delete it from here? I delete it from there, okay. <laughs> You're downloading Fusion. Fusion practically works on a browser these days. So there I'm getting 17 and a half. I'm off by a millimeter. We did the overall dimensions. We made sure to get that right, but I'm still off by half a millimeter. So what, what gives? Forgot what it was. Had to chip to a different location. Hmm. Why would you do that? See, look at that. That is that is crooked by a millimeter. <laughs> it's like that's what I'm working with. The whole thing is is bent to the side. I don't think that's by design. I think it's supposed to go straight forward, but it does bend around. It actually, does look like it's a little bit. Browser edition doesn't only. Really, I don't. I don't know the rules behind that. Is this really off center? Or is this just because it's a rubber? No, it looks like it's crushed in a little bit over there. Is that really? It really sits a little bit crooked? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That can't be. I know they're going to have to compete with those browser-based... CAD programs. 17. Do we accept 17 and a half? Let's go to 17 and a half. Oh, for a server at a location. Look at how close 17 and a half is. I'm willing to accept it. It may it may stretch out a little bit to make the connection, but uh, this will be free floating on its mounts. Actually, that could cause all kinds of complication, couldn't it? But it is it, it's kind of close to 17 and a half. The only other way that this would be wrong is that I got this distance wrong, and this distance here is eh, eh. Ah, wrong way. Six point seven. Seven. Do I move it up? Let me move it up.
Actually, there are chamfers on the outside of this, but ah, we don't need those on the drawing. Um, okay, so how did I locate that? That was from, I think it was from an offset plane. I'm gonna peek over the camera here. I revolved that. That was a sweep. What did I sweep? That sketch. Schwerp. And schwerp. Ah. And then the offset was seven. So six point five. Save, and everything goes crazy. Hoopty hoopty whoop. Uh, there. Oh my God. Update the drawing. Get the latest version, please. Just please give me the latest version. Oh my God. Uh, and then I can view the object again, and it will not snap to where it is. Oh, and I actually think I went too far. Because, yeah, now this distance is going to be... Well, that distance should always be the same. So, what? 17. Yeah, no, I think I messed that up. Uh, wait, hold on, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. From... We did from here to here. Now that's six and a half. What's that going to do for... Eh, it's not, that doesn't work for the rest of it. Well, I, th that's not going to change that distance. I'm dumb. <laughs> I'm dumb. I did that wrong. Uh, go back to... Oh, we haven't even done a position lock yet. Wait, but I brought in that object. I guess now I need to move this, this one here. If I move this, then it'll want me to snap it into place. Actually, what I need to do is I need to move the insertion of that all the way back here, and then I need to go to the position one, and now I need to move this thing's position. So this is going to go... This is how you properly do it. Move it up, and then do point to point. That, hold control, there. To this, hold control, there. So now those are right up against each other. Could be a little bit of space there, but um, that's not going to be 6.5, though. See, it's still 17 and a half. <sighs> Looks like the snorkel goes almost all the way up, but not all the way up. I have not learned about joints yet. I I've done a little bit with joints, but I haven't gotten them to like work for me. Totally. I think this is okay, though. So this will form the basis of the rest of our design. What time do we got over here? Ah, 3.30. Nice. We're making decent time. Been learning about joints every day for years. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. My state could loosen their grip on that stuff a little bit. That would be nice. And if you just let us have a nice thing, but no. Okay, so um, what is it going to look like for this bracket? I mean, I'm going to have three little pieces out in space, four including this thing. And if I make a... If I make like a ring and then I have attachments that go down into brackets, that could print from the print surface. And then I could have another piece that bolts into the other side of it uh, in order to hide the lower layer of the print. So we're going to go from this axis, and I guess we'll start it from... I would let, let me let me look at the top in ortho. Okay, so that's sticking out a little bit there. So I could have it come up and around. Maybe have that a circular feature. There's going to be a lot of circles on this thing. And I have a trough going up to there. And then I will be over the bolt hole here. Maybe put a seam like back here and then have the back legs attached separately. And that'll also hold the motor controller. 
I don't, have I done 7TV? I thought I've got 7TV working. What about in like the regular chat? No, it didn't do. Yeah, Snap, Crackle, and Pop are the derivatives of, of uh, rotation. My, my math teacher in high school thought it was super duper cute to call somebody the, uh, what, the second derivative. Hey, Sisman65, I missed your resub with Prime. Thank you for the Prime, Sisman65. Sorry about that. I'm, um, we actually hit a hype train, too. When was that? Was that three days ago? Wait, what? Hype train complete at level 1,63%. Your community contributed a total of two sub, two sub gifts, zero bits, and zero dollar hype train. <laughs> was that yesterday? Yeah, that was like three days ago. We just had a, oh, press F1 to continue, subscribed two hours ago. Oh, that, that, those were the double primes. Those are the double primes. I already got those. I already got those. I'm not, I'm up to date. I'm up to date. I'm up to date. I'm up to date. But thank you, Six Man 65 and uh, press F1 to continue, and Danger Mouse 8, and Remdog Cap. Wait, I missed your subs for so long. Sorry, I had my head underwater just working. Yeah, okay, so the other Lone Star subbed for 31 months with a Prime, which is awesome. And then I did a diatribe on Prime, uh, and that reminded Remdog Cap, Danger Mouse 8, Sisman 65, who has 14 months, Danger Mouse has three, and then Press F1 to continue, all subbed with Primes. Thank you. Um, I, I, I know I got you guys, but I'm just going over it all just in case. I don't want to miss anybody. <laughs> I get to laugh at my own jokes. That wasn't even a, that wasn't even a, that was a disarming laugh. Uh, okay, so circles, within circles, within circles, right? We're gonna do, I guess like a three millimeter body coming down off of this thing. That's the wrong, I hit the wrong thing. Yeah, there's a vibration polynomials and stuff are, are a, just a wild subject. Six order differentials and whatnot. So I'm going to project this piece and the, I think the surrounding piece. Not the whole thing. I don't need the whole thing. I just need this. I guess I can't get that edge. So we'll just keep that and then the front edge. Because that we will meet up to a CPAP hose size. And I don't know how large I want that to be. We can model that right now. Oh my god. Amazing. So I want that to meet up with something that is of the d dimensions of this little CPAP hose extender. And that has a collar of 4 millimeter. This, oh, nice even numbers there. That's not an even number. Well, the base of it has to be somewhere around 25. The ring is four on this one, and then it sticks out. 13.6. I'm gonna make it 14. So, nineteen. So we go 19 from the base. And the base is where I want it to meet up with this thing. So we're going to go, well, where's my, hmm, on the center point, 22.3. I'll go 22 and a half. What is that? That means oh, I can't do that. Wait, it has to be 22 and a half, but it has to be from center. So. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to measure this in a weird way. Well, but that has to be a circular piece that sticks out of the top. So maybe that's not what I need to do here. What I need to do is I need to make a four millimeter thing off of the front of this. I'll just put this here to remind me later on, but uh, four. And then the tube has to come out of the top of this. So that'll be based on wherever that circle is, plus four millimeter. That'll be, that'll be more of a 3D modeling kind of thing. Oops. Uh, 
I guess this would be a cutout in the plastic. And if I take that and I give it a little bit of an outer radius, then I can make that into something that would capture it. So I need to project this one again. Uh, and I think that's all I need. I probably need this. Just to give me like an inner distance so I don't run into it. Basically what I need to do in this is just create something that's going to hold that, that circular piece. Which is probably better done if I do it all with circles, isn't it? Yeah, I guess I gotta do the whole thing with circles somehow. How's that gonna work? Basically, okay, so this fan, I keep saying basically, I gotta stop saying that. Basically, this fan is going to just slot into all of the, all of the mount holes, and there will be nothing holding it in permanently. It's just gonna be the rubber will just kinda hold it in place. Similar to how it was with the CPAP. With the CPAP, there were two big, like, air-carrying shells that went together, and they had these long uh, mounts on them. So that's essentially what I'm going to be doing here. Let me get all my rubbly bumpers together so I don't lose them. I almost lost one. That would have been a disaster. These are the only ones I got. One of a kind. Okay, so the body of the thing. Let's put this one on. I guess I'll make the surrounding body and then I'll make the features that are going to cut that body in order to fit these things. And so it'll be like this three millimeter solid ring that goes around the whole thing. Three millimeter solid ring and then I guess we need to do a projection out to this and then a projection down to the base where it'll bolt in. See so yeah, we've got all those dimensions there and then this will get like a four millimeter ring that'll meet up with all that other stuff and we're going from that plane down i guess that's decent enough we can go from this plane down and and make all the features and then we'll cut them out now oh, we might not have to cut them out all right so let me see here if i take circles and i come out to this thing well let's get orthographic first bonk okay and i take circles and I come out to, well, that plus a couple millimeter, right? And, oh, yeah, we figured, okay, so I, I, I got to project this in. Project that in, and then I've got to do an offset off of it of three millimeter. I hit a button. I hit A. Oops. My hand is resting right above the keyboard. Minus three. Instruction. That's the radius of our screws. So I'm going to take this and I'll just make, well, actually what I really should do is uh, simpler, simpler would be to take this edge right here. Now that one's inside the radius, isn't it? No, no, that one's at the outer one. So I project this one in. I'm just going to project that one in because it's cleaner. Go back over here. So that's really our outer radius. And if I take a construction line and I go up here three millimeters, I don't need the whole, the whole arc in order to get that. Make that a construction line because it's just going to influence what we're doing. So there's our keep out zone for the screws, for those little screw uh, oval things. This isn't for the laser, this is for the 3D printer. I was gonna use this with a laser. I actually bought a car, big car air filter, and I was gonna dump a bunch of activated charcoal in the air filter. But if you aim the laser properly, it doesn't get smelly. It, it, uh, it doesn't release a lot of smoke. It's basically like lighting a match to light a candle. How far off from this thing do I wanna go? I wanna go like two millimeters off of this, right? So that gives us space. We still have space for our screws. Not as much, though. We're gonna, let's do one and a half millimeter. We'll make it a little flimsy uh, at first. 
and see if it holds up. <laughs> That's iterative design, baby. Shouldn't we run some numbers? No! We'll just figure out if it works. Who cares? It's beer o'clock. I guess I got to do the verticals on this. Do I leave the semicircles in? Well, okay, so that's that outer wall. Seems like it should be a little closer, but I guess this is okay. This thing wants to bounce inward and, and to the edge. Does that front edge matter? Or does it want to use these to put pressure on the other mounts? But it's so flimsy. It's really not that difficult like, like to, to move the rubber around. Is it designed to sit on all three of these having a little bit of pressure? And then I can't have them press up against these bumpers. Those have to free float. A little... Oops. That has to free float. And then this has to like have a little bit of pressure on it. So do we not do anything on the outside wall, or do I want to pinch this? Do I want to put that between the layers of plastic? Like, if I design it to be this width, and then I force this thing in there, I don't know if that's how that works. If I put pressure on... I wonder if I have anything with that radius. <laughs> and I could, like, cut it out. I don't have the, um, the housing anymore. That's gone. Yeah, it might need it might need a little bump for this piece. That might need a little bump in. Let's uh let's project that into the drawing just so we have it. All right, how about project Take all three of the, the front arcs, and then that'll be enough information. It's a lot of stuff. All right, so my next piece. Yeah, it's like a square piece that's sort of... That's a lot of plastic. It's a lot of plastic. I think it's okay, but if I do... If I do, uh, like, have them stick out, maybe I can just have them stick out uh, a distance. So if I turn that into a solid and then I do an offset from it in order to make, like, a bracket that would then rejoin the main circle, We'll do an offset of this, and I'm going to make it three millimeters. That should be pretty girthy. So that ring is going to be our primary bracket surface, and we'll have stuff that joins into that, and uh, stuff that sticks out of it, too. And it'll clearance those. Maybe I need to design one, and then I'll, I'll do a, a pattern of three. Because a lot of this stuff is going to be kind of annoying to get together. So I'm going to close this off. And I should probably... Let's see, how should I do this? Oh yeah, that's right. We're, we're at an angle, so everything I do is going to be kind of annoying. <laughs> everything needs to be point-to-point -point lines because everything is, is flipped to the side. So if I did make a bracket for these, I guess I probably should have done it in the other drawing. You reap what you sow, though. Me sowing, big smile. Me reaping, frown. Uh, let's see. I could take... I mean, I could just take this entire outer edge and I could model that in to the bracket. I could just make a kind of a complicated, weird brackety kind of thing. Like, that's one, that, and that. And then I can offset those by, like, two millimeters. 
and then this will this will bump in just a little bit on these two sides and then this will hopefully well that won't avoid this but if i do offset it it should avoid it but maybe i'll do maybe i'll do an additional like square out of this and that'll that'll make like a like a cut that or i could uh eh, no that's not gonna that's not gonna do and the top pieces don't connect to anything so i do need to do like a pretty substantial is that even selected it is uh offset of and there's a lot of uh, a lot of motion at the front door right now like would a one millimeter be too much? It should be like a 0.5. Maybe even tighter than that, but then it, it risks not fitting. Right now, it'll probably squish in just because of the rubber. I don't know if it needs to be specifically designed for those those bump pads. Because there's one on each... Well, there's not one on the front or the back. There's, there's the ones on the sides. I don't know what they're supposed to accomplish. I mean, I guess they can squish in and kind of be really held in place. In which case I should have a flat piece in the back there, but I figured that will make the backing. Let's just try this. We'll try this. 0.5 and then another radius around it. Oh yeah, you don't do radiuses around radiuses, so this will get a little confusing. Oh wait, it didn't do the two the two top pieces there. They weren't selected. Jerks. Undo that radius. We have a line here. A line here, a line here. So I think I can individually select lines and make all these. Oh, but I don't want this. Well, but if it's a radius, I'm going to need it. So I'll need to make a cut in there. This is going to be a weird design. I don't know. I don't know about this. I'm not selecting anything. <sighs> It might be easier for me to unproject all this stuff and then use uh, lines to connect it all. I actually think I am missing. How do I unproject? <laughs> I don't think I can. I don't think I can. Let's just try to select these things and get them to project properly. So I'm going to take that line and that line. This is where it gets confused. Okay. I'm going to draw over it, as irresponsible as that is. Well, I think, I think we're missing a couple here. There's the dog barking at stuff. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build a tool that will uh, delete all the plastic that I extrude beneath it. So it'll make this shape through the entirety of the thing. So I want that, and I would like these. I mean, I guess I can do that, and then I can do... Why is that red? Oh, because that's part of another line, I think. Yeah, that's what's breaking it. I'm just going to redo this whole top piece then. One of the lines I selected went over into, into one of the other ones. So now I've got sort of orphaned stuff. And then I could do, I could actually do this. Oh no, I can't really build a... I was going to isolate this to this. But I guess we'll just have to work with it as it is. Um, that line's still there. Delete the line, jerks. I guess I can't, to a degree, delete certain lines. Those are part of the projection. All right, let's see if we can fix this. That's the entire, oh, it's not the entire bottom. See, like, look, this one, no, that's the entire bottom. Okay, okay, okay. I can figure this out. I'm smart. Oh, that's no longer projected. Do, 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 do. Just give me the corner. 
Oh, are you guys different? You should be in the same according to the sketch, so. Oh, what, a, what a confusing... Oh, here I can see what's going wrong. <laughs> I can actually see what's, what the problem is. All right, so now I know. Here to here. Here to here. Here to here. Here to here. And then now I have that face. I would like to lift that a little bit, but if um if we offset it, then it shouldn't be in danger of colliding. So let's uh let's take that and let's make a radius around it. Really it's not gonna let me do alright, alright. You really won't you won't acknowledge that entire path. This. It still doesn't like it. What broke you? I break you, Batman. Why are we here? Oh, we're over here. Does it not like the one line that's inside of it, or does it not acknowledge this is like a, a, a line? Something, something's fishy. It's not broken anywhere. It's just these, these are solid lines. Do I need to add extra lines to it, or is this breaking it? Doesn't say it's. Oh, that's because that's the projection of this. I'm having trouble with this. Oh, I think I need to go over the rest of it. Those those faces might be projected in, but it's not allowing them to be uh, lines, I guess. So I'll just take it out to these. And see if it acknowledges it now. How you like me now? It's not like I can trace that one, but maybe I can just take that in like that. I don't think that's the case, though. That seems rather arbitrary of the program, because it's still highlighting that one as blue. It still hates it. Let's see where it starts hating. Where are you getting that haterade from? That broke it. What the, what in the world? There we go. Uh-huh. This is going to break if I update anything. You can just kind of tell when things struggle like this. It keeps like trying to change the side that I'm that I'm offsetting from. That's so weird. Okay, I think it I think it figured itself out though. I have no confidence in this offset. And that'll be a loose fit. So I don't know if I'll want to pull in the, the sides or not. And then again, these two bumps here will probably keep it in place. And if I really wanted to, I guess I could have taken this instead of the arc and ignored these two, and it would have created a press fit. Maybe that's what we do actually need to do. All that stuff that I just did is totally useless, and I need to take just the, the rectangle and offset that. I think that may be the case. Let's go back to here. Jeez. The work that I'm doing is, is totally weird. I'm just going to go here to here, to here, to here. I can't use a square tool because everything is crooked. Okay, whatever I just did was totally cursed. Undo project. I'm just going to put a new line in. Okay.
It didn't acknowledge the this one. Why would it do this? Okay. We'll take that and we'll go point two. I see. Well, I don't know how to do that, so I can't do that. <laughs> That's my logic. The only problem with doing the radius on this is that I can't now do a wall thickness on the rest of it. Uh, I could make this like a like a C shape, and maybe that's what I should do. Like if I take this and I go vertically from here, uh, the outer radius. Well, the vertical isn't quite what I want. Uh, well, a three-point rectangle will align itself to this. And if I go the thickness, what is the thickness of the outside wall going to be? It's one and a half. And then we got to take that around the entire thing, huh? How can I do this given my limited knowledge of what I'm doing? <laughs> the only problem is this bumper isn't going to hit one and a half. Like this needs to, this specific piece needs to be uh, less than one and a half. It needs, like, because this bumper is not going to hit anything if I do that cutout. That's sort of my, uh, that's what I'm, like, struggling with here, is that, like, if I make it significantly smaller than this, then that's not going to bump properly. But if it, I mean, if I do it so that this whole piece hits the back end of all three of these, I guess that does clearance it from the, uh, the other stuff. So if I take this and I, ins well, I wouldn't be going point 0.2, would I? I would be taking just that, the back edge, point 0.2, and then I can take a three-point rectangle up to the top. But I want that point 0.2 on the sides, too. Yeah, constraining this to the shape overall would probably be a good idea. Let's, um, let me undo that, that offset, and I'll take the offset of this whole line, and I'll take it 0 0.2. Yeah, it's not doing like the... Uh, I wish it would do the length of the sides, too. But that ties it into everything else, so... I guess I can do I can do multiple boxes. Nobody's stopping me. You're not, you're not my dad. But I would need the sides to go out a little bit, too. I need them to scale with everything else, so I'm a, I'm a consistent distance from the edge of all this stuff. I guess I can just make a determination of what that is. Oh, that's the, uh, somebody's doing the fire alarm. So if you guys hear beeping in the background, that's because they're coordinating our security system and the fire alarms together. We had a fire alarm go bad. No idea why. They're all like networked together. It's, it's one of these like fully wireless systems so that they didn't have to like run wires. 1.3 millimeter to that height. So if I go one millimeter from the edge, uh, so I will take this front line and I will just, I'm just going to take that and I'm going to go 1.3 out of either, either end here at a right angle. So you can see that right angle restraint is in there. So I go 1.3 at a right angle there. And then I go 1.3 at a right angle here. Make sure that little square in the corner is there. 1.3. Wait, this is telling me that if there was a fire here, I wouldn't really be aware of it. 1.3 gets me way out beyond this thing. One on either side. Almost a half. Wait, this one is 1.3, but this one's like a half millimeter from the edge. Okay, well. 0.5. That's way too small. That's way too small. I'll go 0 0.75. <laughs> 0 0.75. Take it or leave it. 0.75. This is going to be a very annoying shape to select when I need to do the, the cutout. But uh, I'll live with my choices. Three-point rectangle. All the way this edge. All the way this edge. Uh, that minus... I don't even know. We'll, uh, we'll fix that distance based on whatever round number is close. So I hit D for distance. That is... What is that? Why is it doing that? <laughs> Five? <laughs> is that a tangent distance? What? Hold on a minute. 
That the what, huh? Oh no, it's just marking it on the. It's marking it on X Y. It's keeping the markings straight up and down, uh, even though that point to that point. Does that make? Is that really what it is? Let me measure this. 5.321. Oh, come on. Are these, wait, is it separating them out? No, it's not. It's keeping them parallel. Uh, distance of this. No, there we go. Five. It's going to need to be a little bit more than five. 5.3. Hmm, five and a half. So that'll make a little bit of pressure against the rubber and uh, hopefully hold this mount in place so that it doesn't contact this piece here. And then I guess outside of that radius, I need to make the body of the, of the trough. So I'm going to go back to this click on those leading edges and then we'll do an offset of one and a half and it'll break and nothing will ever work okay other way around that is very boring looking but uh maybe we can spruce it up so those lines i need to get into the remaining mounts control double click and then i need to do a circular pattern Those are the objects. Center point here. Three, full distribution. Everybody's looking good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's all coming up bother. That's a very small uh, intervention there. Oh, I, I actually need that line. I need that line. Well, let's put it back in here to here. Did it just delete my line? Did you, did you really just delete my line? Oh, I didn't go from the very outside. I went from the wrong one. Okay, so all the way over here, all the way over here. Well, actually that cuts that off where it shouldn't be cut off, but ah, no, well, okay, hold on, control Z. I'll take it from where it's supposed to be, from here to here. Because that's an attaching piece, even though it doesn't treat it that way. It doesn't like it. All right, well, whatever. This drawing is a mess. There's probably better ways to do this. <laughs> Why'd you guys listen to me? You talked me into this. Okay. Boy, that's going to kind of look busted, doesn't it? But if I set that radius thicker, it's going to be kind of needlessly thick, which is what I, they used to call me. They used to call me that. Let's make it two. Do these get the thickness? Ah, uh, does that not project? Okay, so <laughs> how does that work? Wait a minute. That doesn't exist on a timeline. Let me just measure it just to see. I thought that should make all of them. Yeah, it is. Okay, so they all they all updated. They all updated. Okay, so let's actually like make something 3D before I even think about what the lower brackets are going to look like. I kind of want to print it out this whole thing. I want to print this out and see if it holds up the motor properly. Um, so I'm going to finish the sketch. I guess I am not going to worry about this piece yet because that'll that'll come into play in a bit. But first, I'm just going to make a test extrusion out of this thing. So extrude, and then I got to select everything from this, everything that I want to come with me. I'll go along the back end of this, and we'll have to cut cut out uh, those those as a second operation. I guess we can just avoid the troughs too, so that works out. Okay, want that, want that, want that, that, one of these. I don't want that. Wait a minute, clicking the wrong stuff. Eh. 
I don't want that. Uh, that's good. Over to here. That's good. I probably wanted to do like a radius on the outside of those. We'll figure that out in just a second. So I'm going to extrude that. And we'll just do a test ring like that. I'll go a little... F Actually, I'll go to the bottom, the approximate bottom of these things. Yeah, I'll go a little bit further. 20 millimeters sounds like it's pretty good. That'll fit just that top of the thing in there. So 20 millimeters down and click OK on that. And that'll be the test bracket, but uh, I will have to... Um, well, I'm going to create another piece that screws onto this. So, yeah, we'll just do this as a test extrusion. And uh, now I need to actually give a, give a little bit of a radius to these things for a cutout. So I'll go back to the sketch, and our solids will go away. And then I'll do two more lines. I'll just do... Well, the offset's going to have to be a little bit larger. Because, like, if I do an offset... Here, if I do an offset of this... Oh, that doesn't work. And then it froze. All right. Of, yeah, I can't just select that outside. Okay. Let me do a rectangle from, oh, that doesn't work. Three-point rectangle. <laughs> Three-point rectangle. It's all that I can get to work. Here to here to there. And then I'll take a nice little offset of that. Do like, yeah, give it a millimeter. That'll actually give it plenty of room. So then we have, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, and then take that rectangle and do a circular pattern. Because it's the only way I know how to do it. I could have added them to the other circular pattern, but whatever. Finish. And then I'm going to extrude. Our new found rectangle, buddy. A lot of clicking. I want it to be just a millimeter off of that object, but I'll just sort of arbitrarily take it down till it's below where this thing will sit, a little further. So that's just kind of arbitrary, but it'll stay out of the way of this thing. Oh, we didn't select a, a piece to be extruded. I have this ridge going along the back. Actually, that might be a good thing. That might actually be a good thing for Bitcoin. Having that little radius there. I'll try it with that, but I don't, I don't know if that'll stick. Here, let's get this stuff out of the way. I mean, for this, I don't need to necessarily do this, but I'm just going to put... I'll just put a fancy little chamfer on this. And then I can print this piece, and we can measure it up and see how it, how it does with the rest of the, uh, the fan, if it holds it up properly. I don't want to put all this... Oh, I forgot to click things! What the hell? Do they all have that? Only that one. Why does only this one have little, little tiny little things? Huh. Go back to my extrusion. Where did you come from? Why are you in this place? Okay. Now we can do the chamfers. Just soften it up a little bit back here. Rather make it a little stronger back there. I think it needs it. It's going to be a relatively thin ring. But from there, I can kind of tweak the adjustments and uh, get everything in the right place. And for the next test print, I'll put the, uh, the front piece on it too, the, uh, the CPAP output piece. And we'll see if it needs anything to kind of, if it needs to be thicker to strengthen it. I don't think I'm doing a Saturday this week. I guess we're streaming tomorrow. It depends on what I really want to work on tomorrow. Um, maybe I'll have this print ready to go for tomorrow so that we can roll from there. 
I do kind of want to give these. No, we're, I'm going I'm to keep away from making it too fancy. I don't want to make all the super fancy modifications, but we'll see if we work on this tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe I'll put a little bit more effort into it and see if I can get all my ducks in a row and learn how to actually use these wonderful tools that I have in order to create something that's meaningful and uh, purposeful and actually does something with my 3D printer for once. But uh, yeah, that's coming together. It's, it's actually looking like a pretty cromulent part. Wait, what happened up here? How come some of them do stuff and the others don't? Like this one doesn't have those, but these somehow it's selected? What happened here? I feel like stuff is off by just a tiny little bit. And maybe it's just having too many, uh, too many lines on top of lines making up this thing. Let's, uh, yeah, cause like, what, wait, what happened, what's happening here then? They're like on top of each other. And then those still make the cut. Why don't these cut into, it's like they, maybe I selected stuff differently up here. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Which cut operations look different from additive operations? Oh, come on. Pokemon? So I could select those, but I think I won't. It's funny because this top one doesn't get any support on the other side. Unless you have another piece that clicks into it. Or clear, you know that that fits into it, and then it would it would provide both sides support, which would be something that I could accomplish if I flipped the whole piece around. But then the bottom layer would be completely visible from the outside. We don't want that. We're too vain. We're too vain for anything else, unless I have the motor fit in from the back. That might be the way to go. Actually. Oh, oh, I still have another cutout to make. <laughs> still have another cutout to make. If I have if I have this print as the top layer is the one that doesn't fit. So okay, okay. Um let's just button that up. And then actually let me get that ex extrude in there. All right, all right. Ideas, they're flowing. This goes from object, the other side. Well, okay, we're going to have to redo those steps. So let me fix this up before we finish. So the first things first, I want this to be even with this. So we got to go and move it in the past. So I'm going to go from here to here, and that is... 1.583. So I'm going to move this back 1.583. Uh, so what I do is I go back into this, uh, whatever it is, the step that locks everything in, and I'm going to select everything and click Move on the axis plane. Why didn't it? It didn't take the rubbly butt thing. Oh, it only, it's only letting me move one thing at a time? That seems a little odd. Back, negative 1.583. We'll have a piece that attaches to the front of this thing. Now I could just snap these back into place, or I could move them 1.583. I think since they're not associated, I'm just going to move everybody 1.583. Will you please let me move them all at once? It will not. Well, this tool will not. This one will. So. I really should learn the attach command. What, will you stop doing that? Negative 1.583. So now everybody's in place. So we moved it back, finished the position, and then everything projects just the same into the drawing. So we've got our rubbly bumpers are exactly even with this thing. So I can see where they fit on that. That would have barely fit. But I wanna, I wanna flip this whole script right now. 
So in order to do that, the only two really meaningful things were the two cuts. So I'm going to delete the two cuts. And then we've got the same extrusion here. And now I can take from the sketch the same information, but I hit extrude, and I take these again, and then these. These are my one millimeter offset. Damn it. Stop it. Oh, you bastard. I hate it when it does that. You click just wrong, and it, it like you, oh, did you click and drag? That means you want to select the whole thing. And it's like, no, 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 no. Back it up. Because the way you click and drag determines what kind of selection you're doing. And sometimes that means it'll select any solid that your dotted line hits, which can totally annoy you and ruin stuff like this. So that goes from here. Start, object, here. And it'll go forward in this direction. And then I can make a little thing that comes in and contacts this piece of the rubber right here. And that way, the entirety of the isolation thing is going to be in contact with a backing piece of plastic that's going to squish it a little bit and kind of hold it in place. Because that's how it was meant to be done. So we have one more cut to make. I got one more cut to figure out. And then I'll, I'll print this and we'll either work with it tomorrow or do something that's fun, maybe a little bit more reverse engineering, I don't know. Oops, I forgot to select the other ones. What do you hit in order to do that? Control. So I zoom in there, and I hit Control, this one. Then I hit Control again. Ah, I did the thing again. Cancel. Why must we suffer? I don't know why this one has extra features. I think maybe something is a little bit off in the dimensions. Or something just didn't go in properly. And I don't have the energy to hunt it down. <laughs> I just, I don't have it in me. I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe the angle is a little bit different on that one. We'll see. I mean, all these all these mistakes will come to fruition in the in the print. It'll all be there. Proof is in the pudding, the pudding print, print printing pudding. Where's my pudding, nurse? Nurse, where's my pudding? That one, and then this one. The other one might just be a square piece instead of this fancy chamfering. We'll see. Is that all of them? Yeah. A nice 2.5. There we go. Yeah, so I'll, I'll print it on this right here. And that will put all of our stuff going forward. Basically, it'll just get like a like a shroud over that over those parts. But I also need this to be cut out. So I'm actually going to take an extrusion of this radius here. Might as well just take this. Okay, okay. Take, take, take this. Take it. No, no, no. Take this. That is just not even the correct. And I guess I need to I need inside of that too. It's like what the hell do you want to extrude? No, maybe that doesn't really work. Maybe I need a different uh different thing to extrude, because it's gonna leave a ring no matter what, unless I select all of the right stuff, but then it doesn't know what to extrude from. <laughs> How do I do that? I can't find that plane, can I? Can I do on, let's see, I got the vertical sketch as the sketch one, but then I don't want it to cut everything. I just want, how do I fill in the box? Alt. Nope. 
See, there isn't there isn't anything inside of this. So I could either relegate that to its own sketch. Eh. <laughs> or what else can I do? Oh well that's that's actually interesting. What's going on there? Huh. I could cut the entire radius. I don't really want to do that though. I'd rather just give this its own like offset. So I can actually, I could take this one and this one and extrude them down. It won't let me select the inside though. No, I can't, I can't actually say that. I'm not allowed to, not anymore. They, uh, they founded me out and uh, I had a lot, of, a lot of fines to pay actually. So no, I can't do that. All right, how am I doing this? I could go from the original sketch, but then there's no objects there. So I'm going to have to make another sketch for this axis. That's annoying. That's very annoying. But I guess eventually I'm going to need the cutout tools for this stuff. So if I take a sketch, I'm just going to take it on this plane and then I'll project what I need into it. And what I need is a projection of this radius. We're going to need a bunch more radii when we when we do more cutouts, but for now, this one plus a millimeter. So I will take offset, our favorite tool in the world, and I'll give it one millimeter. What? What? What is this? What is this? Is this a joke? What is this? What happened to our beautiful circle? Oh my god, I'm going to have to draw another one on it. There's probably some irregularity to it. There, there's our one millimeter. So now I need to extrude all of this. Yeah, there's like a break in it. What's going on there? Oh, I see. So that that tube isn't exactly completely what it should be, I guess. I don't know. Ah, son of a bitch. Wait a minute. I've got two different... So I'm going to have to do two different extrudes in order to clean this out. What an annoying... So, first one I'll take from the back of this thing. And we'll go start object here. And we'll go down. The operation could not something something a valid result. Huh. What kind of cursed... You're only supposed to be cutting my uh, that outside radius, but for some reason it's got all this geometry in it. Very strange. Okay, so whatever I was doing there is cursed, and we're going to not do that. <laughs> we're going to try to get an idea of what the circle looks like. So maybe I'll project something that has a solid circular profile and maybe I'll just take that as the radius so not project I need to extrude now what the heck they're there they're there from here I go down this way until I've cut through the whole thing that's not the whole thing there we go that's going to be a tough thing to print. If the print plane is here, well, then again, I mean, this, I can just get rid of this stuff. I can take maybe this. This is going to like break Fusion. Fusion will hate this. Fusion did not hate that. Okay. Oh, then again, that's not going to really want to, it's not going to want to print on the bed. There. That'll be cursed. That's going to be cursed. Yeah, the bed is going to absolutely freaking hate this right here. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. Actually, you know what I could do? Hold on. Let's undo that. Um, I can just take a, I can just take a plane line off of that on the sketch. So go back to the sketch. Get all the objects out of the way. And the bodies. And then I can just take a three-point rectangle.
What happened? Oh, I hit A again. Son of a bitch. All right. I'm doing this using the rudimentary drawing tools. There's probably a better way to do this. <laughs> Okay, that's only for one cut, too. Everybody back, everybody back. And let's get the bodies back. And then I extrude E key. This, 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 and this. And we're taking it from where we got it from back. And then I, I think I need a point two on this in order to clearance that ring. So if I take start, object here oh the cut's already been made hold on let's not make sure it hasn't been made yet delete i guess i could have added it to the cut oh well <laughs> oh well i'm doomed to repeat these things until i get them right there that'll support better on the bed and hopefully it'll be able to make that line without it being completely stupid. I guess we've been using one millimeter, so I'm going to give it a millimeter extra cutout here. So we'll do this, but I got to go back into the sketch for that, which rewinds time. And then unview all of the crap. Okay. I hit the A key again. I'm, I'm like home row gamering. And I keep hitting A by accident. Hey, Pyro, how's it going? So I want to do an offset. It's actually the first offset that I've done. Boop. And then one millimeter. We're giving it one millimeter vibration clearance. And then that'll get extruded for the same part, but up. So finish. And I don't think that needs stuff to join the bed at a good angle. I think that'll clear. We'll see. So extrude, and then, oh, wait, what happened there? I think we're about to cut that out. Um, bring you guys back in. This is getting extensive, this design. Object here. Oh, yeah, that should have a millimeter offset. Minus one. Plus one. Whoa, Jesus, almost spilled my frickin' soda. I got so excited about math. Um, let me pull that down even more, actually. Yeah, because then it just clearances everything. That makes kind of an awkward cut out of that, doesn't it? Maybe that needs to be the size of the cut around the whole thing. I don't want to do that. Although that's probably where the smart money is, huh? Back home. Oh, after bouldering? Noise, 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 noise. Yeah, maybe I want that to be the cut. Course, that makes that line be dumb okay control z all this i don't need any of this okay so instead of that offset this needs to be coming from a 0.1 inch yeah all right all right i think i get it now or a one inch okay so instead of you i need to go do an offset of one more millimeter. And that way we clearance everything all at once. And I'll still do the thing with the center lines because I don't know any other good way to do this. And it'll be instructions come from all the way out here. Okay, and then I'm <laughs> gonna create a three point rectangle. The things I do to get this thing to clearance.
one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I need to view everything and the body, and then I need to come from. I guess I could offset it up into here, but I. Hello? No, not appearance menu. Damn it! <laughs> I just lost all that stuff because I hit A. Oh, why do I allow my hand to hover like that? Move your hand away from the keyboard, you dumbass. All right, there we go. Pikel, we are doing um, uh, a housing for a CPAP fan that's going to go on my 3D printer. Offset all the way up until it doesn't contact anything. That's not offset. Well, the offset will be 45. Come on, careful now. Why is it highlighting like that? I hate stuff that highlights weird. 45, and then we're cutting up through the top. And then that will sit on the print bed a little better, and that arch will be something that hopefully the printer is able to actually create. So without the, the confusing sketch in the way, this is what we have so far. We have a semicircular profile that hopefully won't contact this thing. We'll have to see how much we want that to be uh, to contact. The skull speaker totally failed. Um, I started to build a circuit that used the skull speaker's amplifier parts, and I still have, the parts are in the corner. I want to come back to that because yeah, the skull speaker was the first thing that I, I streamed to Twitch, but uh, or sorry, YouTube. The first thing I co-streamed to YouTube and Twitch. Um, and so I, I kind of want to get it done. It's kind of embarrassing that I haven't gotten that thing done at all yet. Yeah, this is unfortunately going to be a bit of a weak spot on the whole thing. It doesn't need to be particularly strong, but it does need to kind of surround this thing. And uh, there's possibility that if this thing gets bumped or shakes a little bit, it'll, it'll contact this. I will need a further radius outside of this thing in order to make something that goes up to this piece. So I'll probably have to do this again and give it even more clearance that means that there's going to be a lot of support structure there because I'm going to try to hide the bed of the printer here where I can put another piece behind it and then I'll, I'll extrude out uh, like, a, like an end to this so that it actually captures the, um, the rubber pieces, which I guess I can do right now. I could just do that right now, couldn't I? Well, I don't know if I want to come in, into, the, into the, the, the input, the intake part yet, but I guess to do it, we could just cap it off. So let me uh, get that sketch back in. And what I'll do is I'll just extrude everything, which is a lot of clicking, apparently. I'll extrude everything. Absolutely everything. Everything, everything. I like how there's a little red line right there that warns you. I didn't know that was a thing. It's like there's a microscopic one there, too. Everything, everything, I'm invincible. That song was in Hackers of the Movie. Boink. Boink. Did I get the outside one yet? Yeah. Gotta be careful here. You can also make this less confusing by uh, unviewing the objects, and it'll be a little bit easier to find all the stuff that you're trying to add in. The skull speaker, um, I want to get back to, because I, I think I can finish that thing. It's just I, uh, I decided to go and move on to other stuff because everything I tried failed and I, I'm just not a good engineer. <laughs> it's like the easiest project in the world and I, I couldn't do it. I don't know why. That circuit, I, I mean, it might have just been the fact that I was streaming it and made it uh, that much more kind of pressure. Oh, I don't want the inside actually. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, and then don't want that inside radius. I don't want these. Especially don't want these little pieces here. I don't know if they're selected or unselected. We'll find out when it extrudes. That one does not look selected. Does this one look selected? That one looks like it's in limbo. I don't really know. Uh, okay, back over to here. Don't want you, 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 you. 
And then I want, oh, we still got a couple pieces here. This one, this one, this one. That's not selected. It, it seems like they added something to Fusion that kind of uh, highlights odd geometries, which is kind of nice. It, it highlights it in red lines for you, which is really nice, actually, because that's the number one mistake that I make, like that one there. This one we want, that one's good. And we want to go negative one, uh, negative two, negative 1.5, make a compromise. And then let me get the sketches out of here and we can just view what our test is going to look like. So that's going to be the test for the, uh, the fan mount. And that'll print from the bed up. Yeah. There, you know what? I, I avoided some very precise calculations on this thing, and I'm happy. I'm, I'm finally happy. My hope is that this is not going to vibrate enough. And I guess when we design the, the like flute that comes out of this and contacts this front piece, that'll, that'll be when we can determine the full cutout dimensions. I just want to make sure that um, nothing collides. Well, we can find out how long this is going to take. I hit control save. And I save off this version. This is the beginning of the iterative design portion of this whole design, right? We got, I guess we got a little nubbly, bubbly bump in on the back there, but um, this will be the beginning of the iterative part of the design. So I will take this solid, because we haven't done any of the decorative chamfers on the outside of this thing. Um, we can take the body, and instead of calling it... Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Better than Dave Cotton Eye Joe. I've been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. There we go. Okay, now we just have one body on this thing, and we're going to call it the fan bra the bra bracket, the bra the fan. Okay, there we go. So we that's our scientific name, um, and then we save it as mesh. Don't change any of the settings, just click OK. And then this is going to go as a 3MF into my folder uh, on the desktop. So I hit save and it goes save to my computer, users will bother desktop, temp prints, save. So from there, we start up. Oh dear God, how many icons do I have on this? I look like a boomer desktop. Did I put, where did I put the, oh boy, uh, super slicer. Oh, there it is, super slicer. Now I'm still using Super Slicer. Uh, I guess it might update sometime in the near future and be valid again. I've heard you shouldn't go to, yeah, new slice, new version available. I'll eventually do that. I don't know what everybody's using where it does that like tree that, that where it has like those fingers that come up and contact the design. Everybody's using that slicer and I guess that's the good one. But um, I don't know which one it is. Maybe some of you guys know. So downloads folder, I'm gonna go to desktop. And I'm going to go to temp prints. And now the fan drag and drop. So I'm not going to print it like that because I'm not dumb. Print it like this. Oh, no, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to print it like, wait a minute. Oh, I am going to print it like this. All right, so those overhangs would have been totally fine. Wait a minute. I think I messed up where I wanted those um, block off pieces to go. I think those are supposed to... No, those don't go on that side. What am I thinking? No, this is totally fine. This is how it should be. Because the whole... The, the bed pattern is going to go here, and I can make just like a fancy ring to print... To, to put over that. Even like a grating or something, because if the thing is going to like catch a finger... <laughs> well, I don't think it's in danger to do that, but... Slice it. So the estimated time is 50 minutes. So let's send that over to the printer then. Uh, now, my printer hasn't been started up in a while, so let's go here. And I'm going to go to Octoprint. Oh, that's... And then Hunter 2. And now i got to go over to the printer. Um, well, I don't have a camera on the printer right now. I had the camera for the dog coming in and out, and she's not apparently too jazzed about coming in and out, so. <laughs> she doesn't like the noise of streaming. She likes the silence to sleep. 
she's not down here on the, with the printer I got a matte black filament that I need to use up so I'm going to use that I got a matte black filament in there so now what I need to do is restart the whole system I need to I need to refine uh, need to refine my 3d printer setup because it loses communication and then everything goes to crap even though the Raspberry Pi is still like running I don't think I'm going to update right now. We're just going to reboot the system. Because it, it has connection troubles when it doesn't reboot. I don't know why that is, and I don't know how to solve it. <laughs> I probably need it to be able to like turn on the printer on its own, but I haven't looked at, at like how to make that stuff all work. Beds that, ca that make your print structure capture light differently to look holographic. No, I have not. I've seen some pretty funky filaments. I don't know about the holographic bed. That sounds crazy. No, the, the surface that I have on mine is, is a piece of glass that's coated and leaves little circles of glass uncoated. And the PETG sticks really, really well to that, that uncoated glass. And it allows your print to pop off a little bit more cleanly. I gotta be careful to let it cool down every time because if I don't, then it'll, it'll pull off stuff. Oh, is the PEI spring steel, like, uh, lenticular or whatever you call it? Um, what's the word for when a microscopic structure creates, like, a holographic color surface? There's a word for that. Iridescent. It's how birds are the colors that they are. Birds! Okay, uh, Octoprint is there. Clipper says standby, but I don't have access to anything. Connect. We got the host TMP. We've got my 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 feck <laughs> my feckless ID. Uh, all right, so I do test for the BL Touch. I hear clicking, so that's all good. So then, from Super Slicer, I can just hit send to the printer. PlayStation symbols that turn blue or green. Does that get into your print? I would assume that that would get into your print and make it like, it does, that's weird, that's strange. Yeah, because it like bonds microscopically briefly, so if you have something that's uh, iridescent on it, it'll take that. I wonder if you do like a, like a hologram of Ben Franklin, and you're like, whoa, it feels like I'm at the science museum. <laughs> Weird but neat looking. Uh, okay, this is just gonna come up to temperature. So I think at that point, yeah, it's it's like five, not quite five thirty. We could sit here for thirty minutes, but uh, I lost all my viewers. <laughs> I lost all my viewers. They all went away. We had a bunch. Um, okay, yeah, but anyway, uh, we will either continue this tomorrow or I will figure something else out that we we can do. I mean, we can work with a bunch of different stuff. We've got you know, modular synthesizer modules to get working. We got one to reverse engineer that we're just getting into. It's just starting to get interesting. Uh, I have the rest of this design to look at, if you guys can tolerate me doing CAD anymore, um, among other things, right? CAD is just like watching paint dry to me. I've gotten more engagement from CAD from people asking me to do more streams on it. That's the thing. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. You're not that based. Oh, biased. Sorry, I read that wrong. I'm not, you're not be unless you're being based dead right now, which would be horrible. Now, Thanksgiving is, is long over. We are into the, almost into the new year. <laughs> All right, anyway. All right, instead of being dumb, I'm just going to end views. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I read views because you typed it. I'm learning it from you, Dad. I learned it from you, Dad. Okay, anyway, Twitch TV. Take a look at my my outward page. See if I want to plug you guys into anybody else's stream here. Bravo's doing Tarkov. Maybe that's why I had viewers. Andrew Physics Twitch is just Physics Twitch, just chatting. Bruce is doing Battlefield. Man, it's a quiet Thursday so far. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, here's the end card. This says this is all like the the all the inside info and bother here. It's got all the social media links, so you can take 
a screenshot of it, and then you can take down this information with a notepad, unless you're in Twitch chat right now, in which case you can click on stuff in order to enter the Discord or go to Twitter if you feel like watching uh, a boat slowly sink. Um, <laughs> I, I don't tweet very much. Uh, every now and then I remember to tweet something, and it's either the dog or it's um, project stuff that you guys otherwise would not see. Um, I'm not cool enough for a Patreon or anything like that, but uh, if you want more information about projects and stuff, you know, we got the Discord. Uh, you can you can doom scroll my project section to see uh, weird broken conversations, <laughs> but uh, also me getting frustrated at the stuff that I'm working on. Uh, I will be back tomorrow, 19 hours, 48 minutes and some seconds, and I will see you guys then. Uh, until then, I do a joke where I actually uh, look for this blank sort of technical issue page, and then I cut myself off.